Good evening, good evening again, and welcome to another Learn, Grow, Invest meeting. Today, I'll be your host. You should know me as Chike Verwe, as the resident analyst of the Learn, Grow, Invest club, and also the value investor of the group as well, too, for the community. Um, as you know, our investment community is founded on, on the scripture of Deuteronomy 8, 18, where we focus on learning, sharing our expertise and experiences with others. So, and we also partner with the wider finance community, you know, when we have our guest presenters come and share with us, such as today. So just a reminder to join our community, uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on Twitter at Learn, Grow, Invest, on Instagram and on Facebook. And also, you might not be able to see it that well, so I'll just stand up a bit. You can also get we all have, have our merch, so you can you can give us a give us a link to get your free orders in. Um, you'll find the link in the description of this video when when it's when it's done afterwards as well too. So. We also do our investor link ups that we have every Thursday. And basically we cover every investment topic imaginable for, for you. So if you're in, if you have a topic that you're interested in, just leave us a comment under this video and send us or send us a DM through any of our social media pages. And we definitely will cover it in one of our future meetings. So as is customary, every single time we, we do this, um, we do our meetings, we always place it in the hands of the Almighty so that you know it, it's, it's done right based on how we do it, you know, because without, without the Lord, a lot of things aren't possible. In, and that's, that's our belief. So we're just gonna have a, a, a quick prayer just to, just to put it in the hands of the Lord and then we'll get started right away, all right? So, Father God, we thank you today for bringing us all safely together again for another informative meeting, which poses to be very, very informative in this discussion today. Um, a lot of persons are looking forward to being able to understand how to how to research the companies that they wish to invest in or how to research in in doing their investing journey. So we thank you for bringing us safely. We hope that the knowledge imparted will reach the ears and the eyes that are on this call to receive it. And we give you thanks overall in your precious name. Amen. All right. So moment that you've all been waiting for, I have the pleasure of introducing someone to the investor community, to, to, to learn, grow, invest that everybody should know, at least locally, um, Mr. David Rose. You know, he, you know him as definitely the person that are the person that, that knows his stuff when it comes to, to research. So tonight, the topic is going to be researching the companies and this how to research companies and on the stock market. Um, and just a disclaimer, as, as usual, this is not financial advice. This is financial education. So please don't take anything that is, that is given here as financial advice. Please speak with your licensed financial advisors, All right? So who is David Rose, if you didn't know? So he is a final year chemistry student in the Faculty of Science and Technology. Uh, his financial milestones include the winning of the GSE's 2018 Young Investor Competition and also being a two-time winning coach of JC's high school stock team and being a leader, lead speaker at JMMB's Elevate 2.0 session in January 2020. So his experiences include internships with Victoria Mutual Wealth Management and Proven Wealth Limited. And he's currently a business writer for the Jamaica Observer and also acts as a private consultant to some listed companies. So without further ado, would you please give a round of applause, a virtual applause to Mr. David Rose. Hey David, we're not seeing you as yet, but. Sorry about that. 
Yeah, uh, just just had to step back for a second and just turn off my sound as well. Okay. Yeah. So today the floor is yours. Thanks, uh, man. In, in terms of letting the persons know how to how to do this research, where do they look? What do they do? How do they find the right right pertinent information? Sorry, journey. So this is my camera a little bit more. Uh, it's been a long day, folks. Honestly, I wish I could have shown you a presentation PowerPoint, but this is why we prepare links and why we prepare ahead of time with notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go to the basics and you know explain things and also show calculations. You know, certain things that you should know just in terms of the basics and whatever. I'll end up probably just touch a little bit on the foreign markets or whatever, but uh, for today, you know, should focus on the local market and how you do basic general research. So, uh, give me a second. I... Sorry about the cheeky. I think this address was a bit uh, Yeah. So today, you know, talk about local market and how you basically do research. So research is just, you know, collecting data, connecting the dots, and aggregating positions. So the main resources where you find data, or in this case, starting a research, is with the most basic information. So for companies, so companies, probably said companies and the JSC have to submit reports. So simple reports, and I'm going to share my screen. I share on the JSC's. I share on the JSC's website. Can you, can you see my, my screen, Chike? It's coming up now. Right. So it's now it's now up. All right. I have to just check because I can't tell. I remember I'm, I'm actually just. No problem. I got you covered. Don't worry. So the section of the JSC website, where new section just has all information posted by companies, and it's a requirement by companies to publish a GK screen, uh, to publish their quarterly results, to publish, you know, annual reports, audited financials, and that's the most simple resource they get from companies. You know, like articles and publish papers, articles, probably taking stock, earning season, probably a, the broker's research, and like official macroeconomic data like from statin. Okay. So, so the reason why I say statin is because if you understand the macroeconomics of the environment, it's relatively easy to do projections on some companies, especially to their sensitivity or interconnectivity with the economy or what linkages in the economy they are so connected to. All right. So, for those who don't know, the JSC has a rule book, and a rule book is a place that things the companies have to do. So, you know, they have to disclose material changes to the business, they have to announce dividend consideration meetings. You see my screen, right, right Chike? Yeah, we do. All right. Uh, it's a little bit small, though, so if no, you can... No, I can zoom in, don't worry. Right. There you go. That's perfect. The dividend, stock splits, uh, large corporate moves, Acquisition or disposal by insiders. So in this case, like right with Fesco, connected party sold to some directors, which by insider trade, changes in leadership of a company, probably new CEO, director steps down, those kind of things. So those are the most basic elements of just that in research. And I'm gonna show some examples of you know, in this case, how you are look approach a company initially. So not everybody here is what I probably know as Alfie with financials. So because of that, I'd like to just go through, in this case, a company's financials to explain for those persons who aren't aware. So in this case, we're going to look at Honeybone. And the reason looking at Honeybone is because it's a very simple company to understand. So there's a key thing I want to take note of. We just a statement of profit or loss or the comprehensive income. Reason being, a company which has subsidiaries will have something called consolidated financial statements. I'll show something like that in a second. 
But all it means right now is that Honeybun is a salon company and it has its profits and financials right here. So in this case, for Honeybun, gross operating revenue simply means what they sell from their core business. And, what, and this is the profit and loss statement, guys. It basically shows the company earned, what they spent, and what they retained or lost. Right. And the cost of printing revenue is like your, like your raw materials, staff costs in some extent, and then just costs that have to be recorded directly for the operations of the business. With respect to gross profit, that's just what's left after, you know, they take out the cost of printing revenue. And your gross profit is important because when you do your calculations and see the gross profit margin, you get an idea as to how much the company ends up with after they just pay the direct expenses to run the, to get the business operating in a sense. The other gain slash losses depends on the company's secondary items. You can check out the financials, but this includes like you know the interest and inc on in interest income, dividends, because when anyone does own stocks in different companies and those other items. And this will just be a total operating income of 258,576,320. I mean, expenses are just, as I said, the audited notes show everything. So, which I'm going through the, the financials first is to give other persons to understand what, what are financials, how companies work, so they can be clear as to what they are actually following through. As I said, anything you want to find, just go on JSC's website and you'll be fine. If not, you can check the company's website. Most co Some companies have their financials published on their actual website and their reports and even minutes of the AGM. Right. So I'm just going to skip through that. Because the reason why I say this is because unlike in the thing with Jamaica is that we don't have a standard whereby we report certain things. So in the US, they break down these changing items in their financials right so as you can see right here honey bonds dividends compared to other written income potential disposal and property planting equipment and foreign exchange gain which comes like a media still us dollars or foreign currency to hold that appreciated appreciate against the jamaican dollar in a sense as i was mentioned the cost of sales these different item items right here administratives and distribution and that's why i'm saying that even though you're looking at the Quarterly financials, the audited notes give you a breakdown as to what the money is spent on. And the reality is important is you can understand why a particular item might spike. So, for example, cost operating revenue. When the money is costing their notes, but for those who don't know, the cost of flour, the raw materials they use have been going up, which is why you've seen such a sharp increase in that cost operating revenue line, cost of sales. Our administrative costs, I understand the principle, the person where my manner was, or you know, that principle of just everything else. And finance income, probably, probably the interest income from the bank, finance costs basically is like paying your money back to the bank for a loan. And then because Honeybun owns stocks, and based on the accounting treatment of how they're holding these investments, they have to record this in their profit and loss statement. So right. A company which plans to own a stock for infinity, meaning both not to sell or it's just something they just want to hold and get particular income or whatever, they sometimes they classify it to FVOCI, fair value through other comprehensive income. I'll show it in a second, but for Honeybone, they classify it to profit or loss. So in this case, during the quarter, overall value of their investments declined in the quarter, which is why they where you see an expense here, right here. However, for the six months they realized that they were basically rebounded for over six months so it is the quarter rate at decline as i said guys the audited notes basically tell you what this what the company holds so for honeybun journal accident your panjam is ncb so if you understand the movement in these companies prices you can at least understand you know as to how that land item right here will move x honeybun right right and you have your profit before taxation. And I want you guys to understand this. When some companies in the junior market, their first five years are 100% tax free, meaning they don't pay any income tax. The following five years, they pay 50% of your normal tax rate. So in Jamaica, companies pay a tax rate of 25% of 
on taxable income. And for irrigated companies, like companies irrigated by the FSC, BOJ, uh, OUR, they pay a tax rate of 33.3%. So only when they're paying half of 25% of tax, which is why you see a tax line right here at $11.2 million. And that's why you end up with net profit at $76.8 million. And the major driver of that was just increase in revenue, which was explained in the the basic management analysis. And it talks about Easter bond sales and these other things that you know would have driven the performance of the company. And remember, guys, we're talking in the context of COVID. So they have the schools are closed, they have much events, but they're still growing their income base to that to that perspective. For those who don't know, this is what you call your balance sheet. Your system is a financial position, but it basically shows. What does the company own? What does it, what it owes? What's the intrinsic interest remaining in terms of equity? So your total assets minus your liabilities gives you your statement of equity. Your non-current assets are simply assets that you don't plan to dispose of within, call it, let's just say, a year. Anything that is current is expected to be converted to cash or can be converted to cash within a year. So like inventories, which comprise like your raw material, your goods that you've already made, though that's going to be converted to cash within a year easily. Receivables, let me explain this simple and simple and easy. So for those who don't understand, let's just say you provide your goods to a customer and you offer it to them on credit. I say my credit, so the bill comes $100. They pay $50 a deposit, you give them the goods, and at the end of the month, they paid another $50. So receivable is basically, you know, for a service that have already been rendered, and you're using to cut the remainder of the payment. Tax recoverable, simple, sorry, self-explanatory, cash and cash equivalents, talks about what the company has in terms of cash, base, cash, as, cash holdings, along with, you know, potentially some short-term investments. In the non-current asset segment, property planting equipment, so the building, the furniture, the computer, the land, the machinery, these are, are your property planting equipment assets. And as I said, uh, I had to fit my screen. That's the that's the one thing about about our the way how our notes are put together, boys. It's not it's not in the easiest way to, 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 but anyway, we won't gripe about that. That is, that is the, that is what it is. And we make it, we make it work. Um, yeah, yeah. give me a second. Let me just drag it back to that segment. Cause I'm trying to rotate the page cause the page to run away basically. Cause I wanted to show persons what I was speaking about. So since the page isn't cooperating today, for some crazy reason, I guess we'll just leave this for another day. Oh, see it here. So I said land and buildings, plants and machinery, baking fixtures, motor vehicles. These are the core assets of the business that they don't plan to sell, you understand? And for those who want honest what additions and disposals is speaking about, so when the company adds things to their property and equipment, it's recorded here. And if they dispose of something, it's recorded as comes out of that particular segment item. Appreciation is a non-cash charge to their overall assets. So depending on the company's depreciation policy and how they do depreciation, you will see, you know, potentially a 15% depreciation rate on most of vehicles, particular for the 40 years for land and buildings. Or it depends on the particular asset landers and the, the, the value per se. You know, depreciation on cash charge reflects the, the decline in potential resale value for your assets and so on. So you see when you see property plant and equipment is just the overall value minus the pre overall accumulated depreciation. And your balance sheet matters because in the case of Honeybun, they hold a crazy load of cash. And you can at least get the idea as to how the company is capitalized and how it's structured. So when I was talking about liabilities, the current liabilities, trade other payables, for example. So let us say you have staff to pay. 
that's going to come on the trail other payables because probably let's pay them next month and you already recorded the expense but you haven't paid it out by the end of the reporting period the current portion of long-term loans when well, you're going to pay back on your long-term loan for this particular financial year and the long-term loan right here and non-current liabilities comprises the remainder of the loan that is to be paid back as i said the equity right here is the share capital persons invested at ipu and whatever share capital capital reserves covers mainly you know items that would fall under things such as in a revaluation of property price and equipment sometimes financial assets and retained earnings is just what's been kept from the profit and expense line in the simple shareholders equity just shows how the shareholders equity works so to a comprehensive income in this case would have been the whole income that is earned for the six months and dividend will be an expense which is why I subtracted so you see brackets in financial statements that's really speaking to you know the com what is being subtracted in a sense and then the final item here is the cash flow statement so I think all the time the cash flow statement is important not because it just shows how much how the cash works in the business but also what was their actual cash operations reason being as i said depreciation is non-cash charge it lowers your taxable income but it's not a cash charge so because of that what you see for net profit might be very different from operating activities and then the change in non-cash working capital components so in this case we see the three million dollars uh, expense line right here, meaning cash left the business. Inventories, that mean they, that mean they acquire more inventory. Where you see train other receivables go up, or in, this, or in this case with the brackets, it's showing that the receivable balance has gone up. And train other payables went up because in this case, there are more things to pay out later on. So although Honeybun recorded $100 million in net profit, for operations, they had about $160 million worth of cash coming into the business which is very comparable to the prior period where they had, you know, such a high improvement. All right, so let me pull you up for one second. So stick stick on that one there, so just for everybody to understand. So as you, as you stated, if you see something in brackets, it's a it's a deduction. If it's not in brackets, it's an addition. Well, so, that's specifically to the income statement and, and to the statement of equity. Reason being is because under this area, speak, where cash flow is, is different, so, and cash right. investing activities with the brackets is cash in the business. Same for right, right here. Okay. But for changing non cash working capital components, it, you have to be very careful how you interpret it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's stick on that. So, March 2019, trades and other receivables, it was 24, it was 24 million, 24.8 million. Well, this is, the, this is what went up for that particular comparative period. So moving from 2020 to 2021, is it an, it is a decrease or an increase? So, so what you re realize is that Honeybun has taken, in this case, a more conservative policy on how they, lend up, how they give credit. Because remember, mm -hmm. your, cre your credit risk is basically how fast prices will pay you. Because the first you right. are taking later to pay you, pay you for the goods you delivered, it's going to hurt your operations in terms of cash you need to use. Mm -hmm. So let me explain why, how they get that, got that figure. So that part we talked about changing that particular segment of the business is usually covering current assets and other liabilities. So the audited was $72 million, $73 million in a sense, and you have $81 million here. So what you have realized that the $9 million, which represents a, a cash outflow in a sense, is affecting the difference between the audited mm -hmm. comparative to March 2021. And then for inventory, the same thing. You spent more on inventory, which is why you see you're going from 71 million to 74.7 million, which is why you'd have seen the brackets right here. In okay. the case of payables, it's a liability. So because of that, what you realize is that it has gone up significantly from 129 million that audited to 161 million dollars now. Oh. So that is why I was saying that. You can't just look at the brackets alone as it's an expense on the cash flow statement. It's speaking to what comes in for cash flow exits at the same time. And right here, this is addition. But well, the cash flow statement basically shows you know how his cash is entering and leaving the business. So because only one strong operating activities, able to keep a lot of cash 
at the end of the period, even though they spent more on, you know, adding to the property, plant and equipment and paid what shareholders call it twice the normal dividend. That's true. Yes, it's, it's right there indeed. And still had, and still made more cash at the end of the year versus what they started with at the beginning. Exactly. So since I basically gone through that example, just because I want to get persons familiar with what is going on in the whole world of, you know, investing because we have beginners here who don't understand, you know, what the financial statements are. So recap, your profit and loss statement shows what you earned and what you potentially kept after you covered expenses and every other line item. Your balance sheet shows what you owe, what you own, and what's the intrinsic value left if you're to basically cover the assets by the liabilities. Your cash flow statement shows how cash is moving through the business. So there I said, there's something that's not going to be cash charges. So that uh, an item in the financial statement that showed the revaluation of the assets going down for the period, it should be added back in the cash flow statement because, you know, that's not a cash charge. And that is why it's important for you to go through these different parts of the financial statements because it tells you what's going on in the business. Right. Okay, if a company might have a very large profit base, net profit, but the operations are kind of little cash. And as a, as a problem for some companies, they might need to rely on, as you would say, potentially bank loans, some equity raises, or, you know, sell some, some, sell some assets. Yes, that's, that's and true. I'm, and I'm going to show one perfect example of that. The reason I want to show this particular example because our first understand what I'm speaking about with regards to having a high net profit base, but having literally no cash. Cash. Where did the money? Where did the money really come from? Right. That's that's, that's exactly that's the main thing. Where did the money? Right come from? here, net profit for mainly for monthly student living is one hundred and sixty-six point eight million dollars. But for cash operations, it's significantly shrunk to $51.2 million. Mm -hmm. And a larger component of that is because although they put this net profit, the receivers are significantly sh shut up over the year. So I can show you even the balance sheet. So this is the linkages for everybody to understand how we are linking now what is going so, on in the, in the cash flow. 619.9 million. 914.4 right. million. It's not the exact math in that sense. I'm not sure whether they, or they accounted for it or if they're using the net, net amount, meaning accounting for the potential risk of not being paid back on receivables. But as I'm showing you, and at the same time, you've realized that short term deposits have shrunk to $6 million. Basically, $2 million of deposits they had at the beginning of the year gone. has gone, gone. And why? where did it go? Cash flow statement tells us. So the company, you know, redeemed on their deposits because operating activity is very weak. So because of that, what they not find is that they need to pay back the loan, or in this case, service their loans that are in their books. So uh -huh. they have had to pull back and rely heavily on in this Short case. Deposits. Exactly. And they have interest right here that to pay back on the loan as well. So in our operations, net profit was $166.8 million. Cash flow shows you that it's a different situation for the business. They are generating enough cash operations to cover the loans and other potential expenses. So they have to pull it from somewhere else. Exactly, which is why the short-term deposits are taking a massive pullback. Okay. So although the company has a pretty profit line, it's a different story for the cash flow shows you the actual truth. Because uh, we one through it actually books revenues under the concession agreement and they're allowed to book profits based on the agreement they have with UE. But the problem is, when do they get paid? Right. And that is the thing about it. They're taking a lot more receivables right here. And the reality is that they suffered because what happened? Unlike in the prior period where they actually had some support from half of the year going through and they had a strong amount of cash coming into the business per se for operations, it's a different story now, six months in, into the new financial year. And, 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 and again, everything with COVID and everything definitely is a different story. 
And that's why I like to use the cash flow statement to show me what's going in the business because although the, other, the company might say, oh, profits are up, balance sheet is like this, the cash flow shows what's actually going on because, as I said, the company's current asset base has basically shrunk to um, to nothing. You know, Almost current, nothing, basically. Well, the key component ca cash current assets because receivers is there growing also larger, basically doubled from the same period last year. But when are you going to collect it? Right. And that's not a good thing, by the way, because yeah, that it should be pointed out to everyone to know that if your receivables are growing, it means that you're not actually getting paid. You're, you're, you're holding, you're waiting for money to be paid from the persons that are supposed to provide you revenue. Similarly, right. if your payables are also growing, um, just the same way, it means you're not paying out as well. <laughs> paying you're paying the creditors. Right. So I'm going to say creditors, guys, I'm talking about the bank. So if I do a job for you and you I, you pay me a deposit and then you pay me the rest after that because it's a receivable. If I rely on a service from you and I pay fifty dollars and you have to, it to get it from me, the fifty dollars on my side to be a payable, but for you it to be a receivable. That's how it works in life, guys. So when I pay, pay this pay this liability, my payables balance goes down. While for you as a receivable, you're see balance goes down as well but your cash balance goes up up yeah so I'm, just, so I'm showing all these simple things because i said don't know who is here on the stream and i want to understand these basic basic things so they have clarity as to what's going on good stuff excellent indeed connect so the gonna, dots guys yeah what i was going to show you right here was my jsc schedule which is in my google drive for free which i'm sure in the google i'm going share all the time and it's basically just shows, you know, which companies are current in their reporting. And when is their financial year end? Is the next report supposed to come out? Reason being, if you know what a company report is supposed to come out and the market is a particular reaction to those results, you can get yourself into the position from early ahead of the game. So if you know other person is supposed to come by August 15 in this case, you can plan ahead of time and know what you're going to do. This is excellent. And the, and the same spreadsheet right here, you know, shows the total number of companies listed on the JSC. Now, securities companies, which is 92 now, thanks to Garden and, and Fund Fisco recently. And they also have a general market calendar. Perfect little contraption. So, what I was explaining earlier, general market companies have a tax break within their first 10 years. So, in the first five years since listing, they get 100% off on income tax. Right. Then for the remaining, remaining five years, they get 50% off the normal rate. And the reason why this matters is because my, my company's tax has changes from 100% free, no tax to 50%. You have to get ready for that potential increased expense. Okay, even though the company might have been making more in profit before taxation, tax is gonna hit them now and their profit start probably to decline. As you can see, Access, Blue Power Group, Jamaica Tees, Lascos, Cargo Handlers, Dolphin Cove, and then Honeybun in a couple in a couple of days, tax break is all done. Oh wow. That's yeah. Uh -huh. June three actually. So for the next at that report. Point, at that top point in time, the next report is about to say is the is we should pay very close attention to that tax line item and see how it impacts right. the final profit, the final net profit figure after once the taxes come out. Exactly. And that's why you have to have this spreadsheet right if I go to the right companies because if I know your tax is going to increase by big, this big amount, I can plan ahead and say, all right, are you going to, are you going to continue to grow profits fast enough for you to cover this potential jumping tax or I there's going to be a hit by the tax and person gonna sell the stock down I'm gonna take it to entry or it's an exit early ahead of time. And as you can see, you have general accident, TPJ, AMG packaging, which all have their tax break ending this year. So as I said the way I do it, 10 years after listing date, I spreadsheet just checks and sees what stage are you in your remission. If you're basically you know stage one then everything is good because you're at 100% income free tax. If you are, if it's your, if it's false, you're at uh, well actually two if statements. But the principle is 
if you're at zero, you're just at zero. No remission and income tax. If you're at stage one, then 100% remission and income tax. If it's false, 50%. So you get in stage two, so 50% remission on the regular tax tax base, which is still good for them because they can operate the business as they feel like, but, and then as I said, these are the most recent companies whose tax break, I need to remove key, that's an error. Mm -hmm. But basically, it at least gives the idea as to what's going on and how the tax break is going to affect them. So as you know, you can say when the tax break is supposed to end for these companies, the first stage, so you can see has another year left in their tax stage. But the thing is, COVID hit them, so they are benefiting from the full derivation of the tax break. And then Fisco has until another five years to really worry about it in start paying tax again, which means they have time to take that, that money they saved to invest into the business. And with no tax line, I kind of focus on everything else in the business, it can affect them on the project and how perfect it's gonna work. Right. Okay. Well, everybody, I'm I'm seeing the, the, the comments here. Definitely. I can't see the comments, but what are you saying? They're definitely, you're definitely going to have to get this. We're going to have to get the link. Um, so we definitely, everyone, we are going to be posting the link so that you can, you can be in for, I actually think this is brilliant, David. <laughs> let me try, let me, just try let me just try and actually see if I can find it later. But yeah, so I share link all the time. And I said, I, I'll share it to you after, but I update my spreadsheets all the time, so you can at least be know when the results are coming out. And Randy has his every calendar link that he shares as well right. to make things even easier. But for me, this at least gives me an idea as to how to project for everything going forward. And for those persons who are accountants on this stream or who are planning to make accounting, here's something you need to understand. If your firm is audit the auditor for one of these companies they're planning, you're continuing to invest in, you cannot do that. Reason being, Auditing from you're supposed to be independent of the firm they're actually auditing. So because of this, I bit the auditing list in just so for those particular persons who are auditors or in accounting to know what they can and cannot invest in. So for those who work at KPMG, don't get me supper. <laughs> because most of the general is audited by KPM audited by KPMG. So their wow. options at KPMG are very limited. So once the companies, you are a company, a company, you cannot own ownership in them. So if KPMG staff are really to what they can buy, right? I know that actually because I had I had a I had a couple of friends, uh, well, just one or two friends that that worked for them, and at at some point in time they did tell me that once you once you're working for the auditor, you cannot invest in the in the company. You have to dispose of the assets before you actually take up the job, which is why I'm yeah. showing it, which I, which I include it for those persons, you know, who are planning to go to the accounting field. So you can at least say, all right, before I start my job, what can I do in the interim? I want to have my job, what I cannot, what I cannot do. Right. So that's a big spreadsheet, in, spreadsheet for also the auditors, auditors in mind, persons who work, work with auditing firms. Okay. So I'm going to show some linkages basically Right now, firstly, with carb cement, I want to say all the time that it's good when you at least understand where things are coming from. So for those who don't know, carb cement is owned by Semex as ultimate parent company. Who is Semex? Semex is a Mexican holding company which owns a lot of construction based businesses in the sense of making cement, uh, so bag cement and other things. I can't, I, I'm not fully aware of all their business lines because it's a very large company, but in their trade in the Mexican stock exchange, trade in NYSE. And the reason I'm showing this is because Carib Cement reports in conjunction with Cemex. Why does that matter? Because since Cemex reports on a published schedule, which is available to the public, you can at least know ahead of time when Carib is supposed to report the results. And carrier cement is in, is, a, is owned by the intermediary parent, which is Trinidad Cement Limited, which works on the same day as Cemex. As you can see right here, Cemex is expecting to release their second quarter results by July 29, which means it should expect carrier cement to release the results on that day or around that particular time frame. So as I said, June, June, uh, April 29, April 29. Interesting. Connect those dots. 
connecting those dots. And these are some of the simple things I'm showing you as to how you connect dots and understand what's going on in a sense. So I say some of these companies are parent companies which are listed on foreign exchanges or whatever, but they can use guide in a sense as to what to expect with results or understand what's happening in the general sense. So I'm going to share some linkages with Carib Cement and with Lumber. Reason being, because I discovered in my research was that Carib Cement is seen as a tailwind company for Lumber. What do I mean by that? Time for me to show you the links. So I'm going to show you Carib Cement stock price moving towards it. So for those who don't know, most companies on the market, persons react to the stock whenever results are released. So the results are released here for Carib Cement on the, on the weekend or on the Friday, and the price ran up $70 by morning. It was over 62. Got it. What? 13% gain in a standard day. And yeah. the following opening day of the market. And then what we also saw was right here. Results reported on the 29th in the day. So I sent seven the prior day before, shut up to $88 for the closing price for that day. But if you were to check the candlestick charts, you realize that Carrie Smith was ahead $95.50 for that particular day. Right. So how, do, how do you with candlesticks? So, like this is just a doji. Like, it, it really shows that it didn't have really much movement for that particular in terms of the price range. So, the body, in this case for the white, the white candlestick bodies, the upper part of the body is showing the, in this case, the... Close price. Yes. And then, for the extended part of the candle, the wick that's going up, it shows you how high the price went for that particular day. And also called the field rally. And the bottom part of the can the body shows the lowest price. In this case, there was no wick coming out, which meant that the lowest price for the day was the end, oh. was the bottom part of this or the, or the candlestick. And for right here, you can see the lowest price went to $8.50, which is why you see a long wick coming down in this case. And you have $90 as a high, which is why you have a small wick sticking out right there. And you can't even see the interim part of the body, but that's, a, that's just a simple concept of it, though, guys. I think to get over complicated with those still. So we can put it this way so we can let them know. So when they, if they're looking, if they come across a candlestick chart, a candlestick that is white is where the Gains close are price, the close price is higher than the open, and the one mm. that is in blue or shaded is yeah. where the Close price is lower than the open price. Correct. That's, that's the same process. Correct. So in this case, race with the blue sticks, you realize that open was $89.50, and as low as $78. And in this case, the price closed at $78.09. I'll point I, out I'll point out this trade in a second later on, guys, but I just explain everything in detail about research. Because this is what you call technical analysis. So in, in investing. Yeah, fundamental analysis, what the company does, how they make money, how the people view them, all these different things, financials, their future, fundamental analysis. And you have technical analysis where you analyze the price and see what potential action might occur from, you know, potentially news, based on the candlestick data, is there a potential for a gap up, gap down, breakout, these different things. So I, I want to add... I learned a very a very good statement in a technical analysis course that I the technical analysis course that I took that says the 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 candlesticks are the technical analysis of itself are actually the results of the fundamentals. So the technicals are the results of the fundamentals. I love using technicals as a way to plan on my entry price for stocks because I'm not going to buy the peak when I can buy cheap. Right. So then I go back right here to December when Carib Cement released their results around this period. So this was when Carib Cement released their results around this time frame and the price shut up within a couple of days. So question for you, what would be what would we be taking this as? Is this is this more trading just because not necessarily trading per se? So I'm gonna show the results? With, I'm gonna show a dot with lumber.
So I was explaining everything a while ago as to how the charts work. But at the same time, I just wanted to show the connection between carib cement and lumber. And lumber. So carib okay. cement should have posted the results around mid October or before that. Oh yeah, see it here. Oh, that's too far. Carib cement should have released the results around this period, or the JC that posted it around that time frame. And the prices ran up from 43 to 58. Lumbo reports on what is basically called a two month delay. So, Carib cement's final financial year ends on December 31. Lumbo ends on April 31. So, based on the reporting periods, it's always going to be a month difference between the reporting periods. And Lumbo Depot does center a percent of their sales in Lumbo, cement, and steel. So last year around this time, I took a position on Lumber Depot before the results came out at around $1.20. And by the time the results came out around this period, the price went up to $1.55. In my gains, went, went out, came back in. And as I said, you can track this data by looking back at the, when the report was posted. And this time it was posted December 9. As you can see, December 9 is when the report was published and the market reacted heavily by December 10. And if as I say, if it was a candlestick data, it basically shows you what happened on that particular day. So as you can see right here, $1.35 was the lowest, which was the opening price and the highest was $1.44. And you had this breakout happen, then this stabilized point of balancing, and then this had to run up again. So I would, based on what I saw in the carousel report, reports, and you said the financials at that time, I was able to gauge and so wait. Lumber Depot is trading at IP price basically, because the IP is $1.20. The market has been so fearful of companies that when they see good results now, it's a time for them to react. Mm -hmm. And if a company does send everything to their sales in lumber, cement, and steel, keyword cement, and I went to Lumber Depot myself in December, and I tell you, when I went there, Cement went, came with a truck and went into somebody's band back the next second. So you, know, so you got to see that it was, as soon as it got on the shelf, it was flying out. So that, that told you what you needed to, to know. Exactly. And if, if cement is what you'd call your leading indicator, like I said, they basically report a month or two, ahead, a month basically, you're reporting period differences ahead of Lumber Depot. Then that basically gives me an idea as to what to expect potentially for Lumber Depot themselves. Right. Potentially, because they have to they're affected by lockdowns worse than carib cement because carib cement is still like a essential, you know, an essential business, but you get what I'm showing you, though, still, but it still guides me better on my premise, right? Right, and then Lumber Depot posted the results, the Q3 results on March 11. But the thing is, in this case, the market didn't really react heavily to the results, kind of price and price is taking profits. And you kind of see the volumes kind of reflecting that. Would you say it was priced in already? It was priced in it's already. Priced. Okay, because it was moving. It was more moving sideways than it was moving down, pretty much. Although there's a little dip there, but more so, more so sideways. Exactly. And Lumber Depot did a maybe a four on the May 12, and by the next day, boom. So, that, so again, we go back to again we go back to fundamentals. Yeah, so we go back to fundamentals. Fundamentals is one part, but as you've shown the connection between carb cement and lumber in terms of their reporting structure. Carb cement reports before lumber will report. After. Uh, what is it after the months? It was a, it was two months? A after. Month, one month after. One month after. One plus. month. One month after. But we recognize from what you had shown that as soon as carb cement reports, the price immediately reacts the very next day in the two instances that you showed. Whereas when lumber reported, the price didn't react immediately, more than likely because it was already priced in. However, when lumber went to do its, when they had the, the forum on that particular day, the very next day i actually saw that by the way a long time back um as well as when i did when i was present at one of those forums and it, it happened to be lasco and uh, the same thing as well too and it was if anybody would remember it's when lasco was actually bringing out the icool brand 
Mm. That's how long ago it was. And and you know, I saw the, the movement in, in that way, but that was those were my very early days of, of coming into the investing world at that point. And yeah, yeah. It, but you get the point I'm showing you guys showing you though still like in terms of how you connect the dust and where you're supposed to see things. And I'm gonna show you something fun. And this has people all the time. Such request select funds is a very good thing in what it was trying to do, but a very bad thing in the sense of it's causing in the market. This is this I uh, this I want to hear. <laughs> and this is why I tell you all the time that I enjoy watching everything that all these things play out because it just confirms my thesis every time and allows me to even plan around things. So what is GHL? Garden Holdings Limited is a Trinidad insurance conglomerate which owns Garden Life Limited here in Jamaica, Garden General Insurance, and several other firms across the Caribbean. Right. So there's a massive dive in the the NAV last yesterday for Sagittarius Select Funds Financial. Massive dive. But why did it dive? In this case, guess which firm they acquired at the time? Big Bad Guardian Holdings. Holdings. Yep. This is an error though still, because the JSC data system needs to get fixed. But all right, let me explain what's happened right here and why I kind of use such select funds as I gauge as to what can happen in the market in the short term and why it's good to understand what they do. Such a select funds is basically a fund that is basically trying to track the index of a particular in the market, a particular index. So such a select funds financially check they're tracking the financial index or financial index of companies. So what they'll do is that they'll actually own companies proportionally to, to the index itself. Whereby in the case of manufacturing distribution, they check the manufacturing distribution index and they own companies mainly in that segment and follow the same principle. So for such a core select funds, they have dived mass million truly because what happened was that they acquired Garden Holdings on that yesterday. How do I know that? I'm going to show you some data. And this is why I love JMB right now in terms of getting access to data. It's in the last trade data. I know exactly what you're gonna show, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave. Yeah, I'm gonna, so I'm I'm gonna, gonna zoom in. I'm gonna <laughs> zoom in. So, all right. So, such a select funds has to rebalance every quarter, and in every quarter basically. But as the index itself start, basically moves up and down, they have to okay. rebalance. So, when we are going, who is having to come into cross and the JSC, we're like, it's gonna be fun. Uh, we were talking about it and saying that it's gonna be hell for select funds because they're going to have to buy Garden Holdings, their feeder fund. So when Barita their APO, they bought into the Barita APO. When Signos had their, had their rest at the APO, they had to buy into the APO. When Proven had the APO, they had to buy into the APO. When King yeah. Key had this rest issue, they had to buy into the key rest issue. And it applies the same principle just for manufacturing distribution. They saw some GK and bought into the Derma APO. And the thing is, they didn't get all they wanted. So they potentially might balance out and buy more this quarter. But you know what I'm saying, though, Chike, in terms of collecting all the dots? Right. So GHL came to the market as the third largest company by market capitalization. So it's within the fresh index would be very massive. Okay, they came to around like $190 billion. And Sajiko was at 200 and something billion. And when a couple of days, they went to say as the number two company in the market. That number three, no, but it doesn't matter. Select funds has to buy them. And and even so, they have to buy them either at market price <coughs> or at something that is re or at a price that is reasonable. So mm -hmm. this is the part you're about to show that and that I that I uh, saw as well. As I uploaded the wrong photo. <laughs> I'm gonna upload it right now so I can show you guys what I was gonna show you. I want to get to see what I was referencing. Specifically for Sajikor Select Funds and GHL. So I'm going to send it back to myself right now to so that specific email right, right here so you can see it. Because it's going to be funny because this is why I said Jamie and B is a great broker now with the upgrades to their system. On that day, Sajikor, on that day, sorry, without which is refer yesterday. reference, which is yesterday, without reference to anything in the trade queue. 
it was a 700,000 unit purchase at 770, was it? Am I correct? Yeah, 770, 530 million dollars. Here we go. There we go, right there. And thereafter, I, I'm, I, I'm jumping ahead. I looked, I looked, up, I, I looked on the on such a like funds hole is on the JC's website right and I found it. The exact amount was reflected for Guardian on it, connecting the dots. That that seven hundred that was purchased on that day yesterday was belonging to Select Fund acquiring their acquiring Guardian Holdings, which they have to do, and which they have to do to rebalance to rebalance exactly. Select Fund. And see the trade is happening at twelve fifty eight p.m. And what happened was that because of that trade, GHL closed the day at seven hundred seventy point zero eight. So for those who don't know the price, you know the stocks work on the market. The, the closing price of the mark of stocks is reflected in what you'd call volumated average price. So, if the, so, the total volume is in the denominator. The value traded is in the, in the numerator. So, if more shares in this case traded towards the skewed end, in this case seven seventy, and it's such a large volume, in this case seven hundred thousand, the price is going to close around that range. All right. So, seven hundred thousand to seven hundred thirteen thousand. So, seven seventy was expected. As you can see in the doge and the candlestick right here, it's at the highest 786, a lower 750. But what? Because of that one trade and the scale of the trade itself, it caused the price to close around that particular price. It's a and question. That is, oh, I was going to explain one more thing. But, so that's why oh, we no, see go, price, ahead. go ahead first. Go ahead first. When you see price get transactions up in the market, such large transactions, look at the top 10 list of companies. You can at least know who potentially bought or sold. And you understand why the price dived so much in that particular day. Right. So the question is, um, and this would be a question, I'm sure it must be on, on, on person's thought processes, uh, minds. For persons who bought in mm -hmm. at the expectation of about 900 odd dollars, go back to the, go back to the chart at the highest oh, yes. the high <laughs> point. Oh God, I'm so sorry for them. What is the, what is the, what is now the implications of, based on the fact that you know, it's it, the price has now been pushed down to the point of 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 seven seventy. It was the close today's close price is what? What was today's close price? Today's close price is even lower at seven hundred sixty three ninety. <laughs> right. So they now have to do what? Wait until select funds have to wait to rebalance because the thing is, well, select funds got in at seven seventy. I'm talking about the yeah. people who got in at nine hundred. They just have to hold and, hold and take the burn if that's that what they want to do, or they can just sell and take the loss and with the money elsewhere. But yeah, that was that was in the first couple of days when Guardian was basically extremely liquid because the shares hadn't reached out to oil market as yet. Mm -hmm. So, for persons who don't know, Guardian Holdings is originally domesticated on the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, their home market. Right. They used to be listed on the JSF to 2013, they listed because of illiquidity, and they released it on May 5. However, in, in the case of Guardian, they didn't do a capital raise. They did listen my introduction. So what happened was, is that persons in Trinidad were doing inter-CSE transfers, CSE sending for central currency depository, and bringing the issues from Trinidad to Jamaica to then sell to get their profits and whatever and get liquidity on their side. Mm, so okay. in the first few days, what was happening was that there were literally no shares available at the time. And the first day, the circuit breaker halted it, so I'm going in higher, but in the first few days, they realized that the volume was very low just because the shares were coming was slowly to, Jam to Jamaica. Because that is how it works. You know, applied, you talk to this TTCD, say, hey, I'm trying to see this amount of shares, pay a fee, and it comes over to your Jamaican JCSD account here. And because of that, I saw a person end up getting to sell their shares, JHL shares here in Jamaica. And with the inter CSE transfer, which is why they're able to do this off of a sale to the market. But at the same time, you have Trinidadians who want to get liquidity and then liquidity exit. Because, all right, GHL was trading at $25 recently before it cross listed, which is about 582 JMD, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine you're able to sell your shares at 968. Of course. That's a, that's a killer profit. That's, like a, killer, that's a killer profit. 70, 80 percent getting your money. Right. It doesn't matter where you're selling right now. You, ha you have a guaranteed exit in Jamaica, and the Jamaican dollar has been revaluing really to the US dollar 
You can buy yourself even cheaper and know it's about Trinidad if you want. And we know that and we know that they have their for their their foreign currency situation um, liquidity issues at times so at the time so yes it it, it is very much a, a positive for that for that shareholder and the thing is when Trinidad is bringing shares over to Jamaica which is why you've seen such a higher amount of selling orders mm. this feels like something similar though this does feel like something similar it, it's not this it's not the same but we had another company that when they were supposed to be listing for their APO, you know, others decided to sell at the same time, driving the price down. You know, I know what you're saying, and I won't reference it right now. I won't reference yeah, it. We're not talking about I'm just saying that we connect the dots and it feels the same way. The, the Trinidadian side is able to bring it over, and as such, they're pushing the price they're, with their quantity, they're pushing the price down because it's 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 there more there's more volume being sold and yeah. the ability for buyers to purchase the volume at the same time select funds for a buy in trinidad to get the shares from which is just showing an example that right. they have select funds pension funds ncb bring shares into the market so right now you see the price basically coming so high in the first few days it was a function of the liquidity situation but as more shares come onto the market now and there are more sellers and buyers or the more selling volume than the persons who want to buy, the price is going to go down. Because the thing is, for the Trinidadians, they don't care. So when NC released their prospectus last week, Monday, a particular seller was in their GHL shoes for $900. This guy right here, I remember. By the following day, he moved to $790, under to NCB's price. And in other Trinidadians, I've had to this week start to put in their price even lower. Because the thing is, they can't really push all this volume through the buy side of the queue because they probably cash trash the price. But at the same time, you benefit from them as a guaranteed exit. And it's a massive profit for them because, as I said, you can buy JJ and Trinidad for $600, GMD equivalent $650. And you're saying to you in Jamaica at $780. Mm. That's what. So I'm going to throw you a curve here for everybody on the call, which is going to be. We got another 20%. one. We got another one coming. And that's Massey. Mm. And, and the thing is, Massey is the same thing. Yes, it makes see what's happening with Massey now. Massey's market price has gone up because of the, the crisis in announcement. So they're trying to run 1,600 JMD. Wow. Which made them even more expensive than Palace. But based on the number of shares in circulation, they'd come to the market at number four on the market. Just about above score, she's throwing 150 million, 50 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So NCB's at the top at 300 billion plus. So you grab 200 billion plus, GH like 190 plus, and then you have a massive company now to become the number four largest company in the market by market capitalization. And in the first few days, they're going to see the same problem. First, they're going to start selling what they have at the time, but they're just going to scramble to buy it because the seller one is giant, it's undervalued. And as more sellers come in, they're going to see the price to come down further because the thing is, by the Indians, you're giving them a very good payday. Because here's a joke. And if I tell you, you look at it, the candlesticks, guy David has 1,134.9 on his second day of trading. All right. So you're basically giving the Trinidadians a wicked exit opportunity, a great time to get profit at the same time for them to move back to Trinidad in FX. <laughs> so when I talk about connecting the dust people, it's a whole plethora of things you have to analyze in a sense. So the question, the next question would be, for the persons, for, for the new, for the next cross listings that are coming in, it would be to, to understand what is happening, understand what the financials look like, and then more than likely, would you say, give it weight to so get what it for the first for the is, because here's how supply and demand works for those who don't understand econ or what supply and demand relationship is. So if you have a lot of supply, and not a similar amount of demand, a price tends to go down. If you have overwhelming demand compared to supply, the price tends to go up. Up. Yeah. Within the first few days of GHA listing, you had very low supply and interested buyers. But as more persons got shares to the Jamaican market, the um, the volume of demand of supply had to outpace the volume of of, some, of persons who want to buy it. In this case, uh, demand. Mm -hmm. So because of that, what you basically found is that. They're just basically exiting, prices continue to go down. And people are, people are buying into the NCB sale, offer sale, and going to just buy 
uh, geologists to say it back at the same time. They want for a long term hold, but the Trinidadians who are bringing the shares to Jamaica are going to continue lowering the price because the thing is, they have this massive holding of GSA, which they bought for probably cheap in Trinidad. Right. And there was 18 TT last year, which is around 300, 400 JMD. And I'm getting my money on almost wow. 100% in Jamaica from Jamaicans who I don't like, but still want to get my money from. Yeah, that's, and that's the thing about that's... it, guys. It's a lot of dynamics in terms of how relationships work and why if you see a crisis, you know, this IPO, APO, all these other, other things, it's important to understand what's going on in the entire background. So GHI close at 32.31 TT. Put this into Mr. Google. Just for persons to understand how much profits these trainers are getting now, right? I mean, it's to Jamaica. It's at 7.10. Wow. So it's basically almost to the Trinidad and price. But the thing is, personally, they bought it much cheaper. Yeah, it's, they have gotten it at like 300. So that means that they're already 100% up, or, or even are less than 300. So they're already more than 100% up. So exactly. to get out, to get out, to them, get out now is perfect for them. And I think but the, the, the price is running up in Trinidad because the what happens in the relationship in Trinidad is that when it's the process in Trinidad, their prices are trade higher on the Trinidad market compared to the Jamaican market just because persons have found a liquidity exit and for them to access the USD. So I'd buy NCB in Trinidad, carry to Jamaica, probably it's a loss, but I convert to USD, I get my USD or hard currencies I need it and do my business. So just just because it's not there any, as yet, but let's see what Massey is trading at right now. Massey All right. Is trading right now. Just for everybody to understand, so they have. So let's see if we can do a rough calculation of what that what that translates into in Jamaica right now. And that's why I tell you I love Google because it's all calculations for me. TTD is a currency symbol for the Trinidadian dollar. JMD is Jamaican dollar. That's a currency symbol. Sixty nine seventy six. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Don't worry, it takes time. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Six one thousand five thirty three point one two JMB. And the price has to go up even faster now because it's coming to Jama the Jamaica Stock Exchange. So they know like two weeks ago, and I'm sixty-four, all the way to like almost seventy now. So there you go, guys. Understand the dynamics, understand the connections of what is going on. And as you can see the research. For companies that are cross listing, go over to the go over to the stock exchange that it's coming from, which is Trinidadian, the Trinidadian Stock Exchange, and take a look at what the financials look like as well. And, and Massey is currently at 150.8 billion GMD, just higher than Scotia, but just below uh Garden in this case. And as more Trinidadian companies come to the to the JSC. That currency difference and the number of shares in circulation is going to affect the value they come out in terms of market capitalization. Question: What would what would what do you what do you suspect Massey is coming as? Is are they retail manufacturing? What what, what conglomerate? What, what would they? What would they? And this is why I this is why I love to use GK as what I would call my guide. Why GK derives most of their profits? Keyword guys, profits from their financial business, banking and investments, insurance, so on. But mm -hmm. the JS classified and the manufacturing distribution because they derive most of their revenue from the food business, which is manufacturing and distribution. So Massey is a manufacturing and distribution company. That's what it's coming at. Coming yes, at. because here's the thing about it. Integrated retail is a business of Massey, which speaks to their distribution business, their food business and everything else. And most of the revenue, as you can see right now, some retail and the massive annual report basically outlines uh what's in the interior of the retail segment so you get the dot that i'm trying to connect here i'm, I'm asking it because i'm wondering mm -hmm. if select them is gonna have to buy that's what I'm, that's that's exactly what i'm getting at. it's a feed of fun guys let's think about it so if an ap happens they're gonna buy three balance across this thing wow three balance 1500 though yes Wow. 
And these companies will not split unless there's a reason for Trinidad and shareholders to get a value from the split. Reason being, does it make sense for Trinidad and shareholders to get a split or no when they can get their money? Or will this split help them for getting more exits on the Jamaican market? Does it matter to the company because it really doesn't affect them because the number increasing the profit per share or the earnings per share really doesn't help them that much. It just helps shareholders, but in the same sense, there's liquidity, which is the important thing. If there's less liquidity, a stock is rational to come in. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily the stock price itself. Because if you need me to remember, GK split their stock because there was low liquidity as the price went to $100. At the time, the JSC had a 100 share rule whereby you had to buy 100 shares of a company for any for buying or selling. So if JFK was selling for $120, they'd spend 12 grand just to buy 100 shares. No, this company split went for $40, $41. They could buy 100 shares now for $4,100. And GK is very heavily liquid. NCB is heavily liquid as well because players saying, oh, NCB's surprise is going to split up in each 80, 100, 120, 150, 200. We're here, call it two years later, since NCB hit a tie and still haven't split. Okay, so the quality is irrational for the whole stock principle because if your company is trading very little, very not much at all, and there isn't, I remember, company had to pay fees to the stock exchange you listed on to remain listed. Right. Apart from just managing the other rules that to follow the to be able to take you, but it's a listing fee every year. And if your shareholders aren't getting much value, which includes mainly the big guys on the board and everything else, then it really doesn't matter, which is why Guidance said they're delisting back in 2013 because the fees they're paying for the remain listed, which is low liquidity into the train and everything else, wasn't worth it. So, so somebody, I'm just gonna click, click, um, there are a couple of questions that I have, but this one I want to actually, want to actually sure. ask you. Know. Somebody asked, what, what, tell, tell, tell us the benefits of the cross-listing on the GSC or any other exchange for that matter in terms of this. So uh, I would, yeah. for, for, for the cross-listing, what you have to remember is when you listen to another exchange, that opens up an entire new capital markets for you. So remember, a company can listen on a stock exchange just to provide an ex- for, for business owners, like in the Fesco case as well, but at the same time, the company can raise, raise money. So, massively can come into Jamaica, raise a good amount of JMD, and then just uh, come to the USA and send it back to Trinidad or do acquisitions or whatever. So, massively is selling their various manufacturing limited stake to prove the message limited, and they're getting 21.5 million US dollars for it. Coming on the JSC, I wasn't actually come and raise more money. And as I said, massively trying to PB of about one time. So, imagine the PE. And profits have been going up and up over COVID, really because of the retail segment in a sense. So processing itself allows, you know, you as a company to cut into the capital market, your share price is a better premium in a sense in a better more developed market at JSC compared to Trinidad, where it has what you'd call a low multiple environment, whereby, as I said, JJ was showing us a PE of about six, five, seven times for a couple of months, even right now. And the reality is that persons are saying, oh, it's so cheap. And we're coming, Jamaicans are saying it's so expensive. But that's because of the currency difference, because in Trinidad, there's so much yeah. money for them. Right. And even though right. in Jamaica, you convert to TTD, it's still cheap. So it actually, when you say JSA, which is $1,500, for example, it's a P of about like 15 times, for example, which would basically which made the case for GHL shareholders benefiting here in Jamaica now because. The share price was barely within Trinidad for some different reasons as I, I'm going to explain after. And now you're getting a chance to actually sell it in Jamaica at a very good profit. Convert it if you want to cut it to trade on the JSC if you want, but at the same time you can convert that money to USD as in the Trinidad. So for those who don't know, Trinidad is a very strong exchange control mechanism, right. meaning that you can just use it as a country as you feel like. So even some persons have to actually go to the bank and show reasons for actually applying for USD. Same thing like Barbados. Jamie B. Trinidad right now, she's only going to use for a debit card about 300 USD per month, even 250. That can buy a plane ticket. And it's even more stricter in Barbados, just to let exactly. everybody know. So that's, that's the reason why I'm asking these companies are coming to the JSC at the same time because it's almost more value for their shows in Trinidad, where shows in Jamaica are going to come on here and, and back the stock at the same time. 
it decreases the owners who are probably board members or directors or executives value in the company or the overall portfolio. Right. And for, for Jamaicans, how does this crisis benefit Jamaicans? You can buy them good company for cheap. It might seem expensive from a nominal price perspective, but the fundamentals are there. The company is selling for cheap, in a sense, by the right. price, the book price, the earnings. I can show you something That's after, true. but really and truly, it's selling for a very low compared to what you see as its implied value, which you probably can, you know, and Jimmy can companies out here for probably like manufacturing, financial, showing that is above 15. So if the price does equally to around that area, it's a different ballgame. All right. Actually, so I'll, I'll ask the question because I'm sure there's going to come at a point in time. As we are talking about, we've been throwing, throwing those terms around like the P and the price, the book. Where would we be, where would it, where would a person be getting good comparisons for for these companies in relation to their industry that that they're supposed to be where, where would we where, where should they look all right give me a second i'm going to show you vmware stock picks because it's what the quickest place i can think of with a comparison measure in terms of the reports and the overall industries and, and for the jsc and so on so let me zoom go. in I said, I have my own thing on my side, but it's a model laptop, so I'm going to show you what I for VMworth in this case. Barita has it, maybe it's on the website as well. So as you can see, this is the earnings pressure for Barita. The price divided by the EPS gives you the PE, gives you the PE, the price to earnings. Nice. They give you the book value per share right here. The price divided by the BBPS gives you the price to book. They also include the return on equity, the dividends per share for the period and they classified by market and by industry. So right here you have finance, you have insurance, which is a GHL and key, manufacturing, communication, tourism, retail, conglomerates, real estate, and they're seeing the overall market, in market average is about 18 times for PE, excluding outliers, basically. All right. And then you have the sub, and then you have the subcategories in terms of the uh, yeah. Averages for each each sector, the sector exactly, average. and it's the junior market as well. So, as so somebody, chicken, wait, I'm gonna pee. Wait. I'm gonna pee and come back. I have to use the bathroom. I drank a lot of water. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so for everyone, while while David um comes back, so there is other places where you can actually do a lot of your research as well. So I'll I'll just throw that in so when i'm actually doing research as well know that you must also do this you have to look on the different areas where the news comes out in so for instance i know that most persons might not get as as granular as i will but let me show you um where where we like to look or where i like to look so i'm going to share my screen for a second and one moment bring that up all right, see, so everybody should be seeing my screen now. So I'm just going to bring this over. So I use what is called a news curator. Um, it's a program called Feedly. I've been using it for many years now. And basically, it allows me to pull up all of the Sorry, different. <laughs> oh, no problem. You want to, you want to let me? You have to use the bathroom yeah. when you get a chance. Well, I just, so you should be seeing my screen. What I'm doing is actually just um, showing everyone where I where I get my news and how I pull my news from. I can't so, see your screen right now, but this, uh, for person on, asking the questions, yeah, person they're not seeing your screen either. Oh, they're comments. not seeing it? Yeah, and for those persons, for Tiwi who was asking about the, the court, your quarterly financials being late, uh, that's a function of the company's ability to report information. So remember, okay, so in the case of Express Cater Limited, they had give the reasons to the JSC as to why their reports are coming out late. In this case, the interruptions to their operations, the new ERP system in their case, for even in the case of whose other quarter the results is late. Mm -mm. I don't think anybody else is late in um, the moment. But uh, for even the companies like, I'm going to show the link between Proven, uh, Access, and Jamie being a second, but it doesn't really actually about the good companies or good quarters reporting on time. You have to understand that a company won't just release its unaltered financials without having full information, and, and that's just good, good practices by a company. 
So Chike, we can see your screen now. Okay, good. Perfect. All right. So this is as I said, I use a news creator. So so just to add to, to David's to, to what David has been sharing. Um, we've looked on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, we've looked on the Trinidadian Stock Exchange, but also the other place that you must, you absolutely, absolutely must be also looking for your news is in the different news sources for whether it be Jamaica, depending on whichever market you're looking for, the Caribbean market, the Jamaican market, etc. So for the Jamaican market, of course, as we introduced, David writes for the Jamaica Observer. So I have a feed that pulls everything for the Jamaican market. You need to be looking at the Gleaner business. You need to be looking at the Jamaica Observer business, RJR business as well also. And then there are some other other places that you can get your news from. So one of the one of the places is the Caribbean. There's something called the Caribbean Business Report as well. Yes, yes, yes. They are. I find they are actually very like really excellent in 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 their reporting for the overall Caribbean market of itself. Um, and again, shout out to Kalila. Kalila has her media as well too, and her newsletter. So you can also get that as well. So I've added pretty much for the, for my business section. I have added the, the the main ones are the Gleaner business, the Jamaica Observer business, RGR business. The Caribbean Business Report and Kalina Reynolds Media as well for, for my own. And of course, the sections for the stock market. David just showed you um, Victoria Mutual. Well, unfortunately, I can't pull that because it's, it, it doesn't come up in that. But you should be paying attention to the JSE, the Maybe Reinvestment um, Limited. They have their, they have their stock, stock side as well too. I see Insider, most definitely. There is... JN Fund Managers, there's NCB Capital Markets, there's Proven Wealth. And as of recently, Sajikor has launched what is called their Investor Core as well. So just type in Sajikor Investor Core and you'll find that as well too. So that's everything basically for the local markets. And here is the, should be seeing the screen that says Caribbean Business Report. There, as I said, for the for the overall Caribbean, Caribbean factor in terms of, in terms of showing um, what's going on? I find them really good, but they come a bit late, David. I would say they come a bit late in terms of they give you after whatever's been published in Jamaica. If it, if they're dealing with Jamaica, it comes afterwards, right? But they they, they do put out a very nice report, um, in terms of into art, very nice articles in terms of how they break down. So I like them as well. Mm. All right, so back 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 to you again. You're you're sure uh, again. Can you see my screen now? Um, one second. As a composite, well, I, I just stopped sharing, so you can go ahead. Well, my screen is supposed to be sharing now, so can you can you guys see my screen with Not the spreadsheet? Not as yet. Hmm. Let me stop sharing. Let me share again. All right, there we there we go. So can you see my screen now with the spreadsheet? Um, still, well, for me, I'm still waiting for it to come up. Oh, yeah, it's coming up now. There we go. Yeah, it's back. Oh, yeah. Somebody a while ago said that Ask Manufacturer is late. They aren't late, guys. So let me explain about the reporting periods of companies and how I got all this data right here. So a company has to report 45 days after the end of its quarter for its financials. Please note that Alaska Manufacturing, or Alaska's, are reporting for the financial year ended, March 31 in this case. So the JSC gives you two options in how you report your financials for the end in the year. You can report your financials in 60 days, and in this case, 60 days after March 31 will be May 30. So that won't be until on Sunday. And then you also have the option of 45 and 90, whereby you can report your unaudited within 45 days and report your audited financials by the other 45 days after that. So you get 90 days in total to prepare your audit. So with FESCO, FESCO did that. So FESCO reported their audited financials by May 15, and they now have until the end of June to report their audited financials. So the person was saying last manufacturing is late, they aren't late as yet. Last okay. financial services advise us that they're going to be late because of odd delay in the process of completing their audit, but last case and last manufacturing should be ready by Sunday. 
So 60 okay. days after, in this case, it's in May 30. 30 days in April, 30 days in May, 60 days in total. By the way, this is this this sheet is a gem. I, I am definitely getting this as soon as I as soon as you, you give the link. There's <laughs> no question about it. So I'm gonna show you some other links that I have built up. So persons can have a little fun time in terms of you know understanding this case, how I do my analysis in terms of you know what to expect for some things. And I'm gonna show you the PE for Massey and I can the PB as well. So and this is what I said to my title, the JSC is foolishness, but c'est la vie. So, Access Financial on May 14 reported that they're going to, out of financial, they're going to be laid by, by up to June 15. When I saw this, I remember what came to my mind first? Proven. Why? They reports for their financial year in that March 31 as well. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I was like, Jano. And then... Like that, a clockwork, two days ago. Oh, that's the wrong notice. Let me just go to the actual delay. And a clockwork, two days ago, proven says, hey, financials are late. Look at this key thing right here. Associated entities who have invested by COVID and for material part of proven investments, financial statements. Interesting. So, so AFS let me so because, yeah, go ahead. Let me explain that. So, all right. So the way audit works is that the auditors come in, review your financials, and in this case, also every year, associate financials. So for some companies, they're put on a concurrent basis, meaning that whatever their associate puts out, they put it out at the same time as well. So they share sure associate on the same period as well. In the case of NCD financial group, what they do is that they do a three month lag, whereby Suppose the audit is in September. They'll appear the June financials for their audited rather than wait for the company's financials to be made available in their reporting period. Because they miss up their audit, you understand? Right. So they appear a three months lag, but in case are proven, they report everything consists at the same time. So when I saw the access delay, I said, Jan, we're going to report the delay in short order. And here's the thing about it. Before Jace deleted it, God, I, I'm telling the foolishness. JMB reported today that their audit is going to be late as well. And they're supposed to be ready by probably like July 5 as well or July 50. I don't remember, but yeah, they're still late as well. Huh. And it's, it's, it's when okay. I saw that, when I saw that, I said, wait, same problem for proven. Because I said, and I was a conversation with somebody yesterday, and I said that I expect JMB's audited financials to be delayed. And they're like, that's my disclosure. And I said, all right. So I saw this morning, and it seems strange. It's like, you're on the ball as usual. So that's why it is. So that's another. That's another very important thing then to make. That we should. We should ensure that we pay keen attention to our companies and their subsidiaries if they have any. Subsidiaries alone, but remember that in this case they are associate companies. Right. Because right. proven's are subsidiaries that they do control. The artists are finished. Okay. So let me just go to the notes so you can see, guys. So let us zoom in. So, in the next thing, basically, was an associate. In simple cases, it's usually your ownership of another company between 20 to 50 percent. So in this case, JMB JM Group Limited, Dream Entertainment, and Access Financial Services are their three associates. So, as I saw access to they're going to be late, I'm like, Jano, put my report late. And they went proven said material, like keyword material, and the JMB is going to be late at the same time. Because JMB makes up a very large component of their share of associate profit and their overall associate reporting and their financials. Access reports are very minute stakes. When they said material now, I'm like, oh, JMB is going to be late. You can see all their subsidiaries right here, and their subsidiaries are reporting on time. It's the associates which are causing their audit to basically be delayed by such a long by an extra period of time. So hold on, you so the equation of being on time is the fact that it's in there. That's where you say go go back, go back. Let's, oh. just, let's just clarify that. What is what is what did you equate as being on time? Oh, because so the, the, so, the, so the subsidiaries, what they control, they're mm -hmm. always on time. That's not a problem. Right. The associates is which is causing the problem for them right now. Keyword, associate entities, material part of financial statements. 
so from so that's the question i just had again how do you identify that the the associate is the issue if you didn't have this if you didn't have this this no this so thing we need to put it on the same March 31 schedule, so the financials are supposed to be ready by May 30. And ah. they already said they were supposed to have a dividend meeting set for yesterday as well, which was posted right. to the JSE. Right. But when I saw at the point two weeks ago that their financials are going to be delayed, I met Jano. And the thing is, when access said their words are going to June 15, I'm like, oh, who is going to get delayed like that? Okay. And then when I heard Proven's disclosure at the same time, mm -hmm. Jimmy became to me as Jimmy is going to be delayed as well. Got you. Got you, got you, got you. So okay. that basically gives you more time to prepare for my position if I have a position improving in this case or access or Jimmy B. You understand? Right. So right. Once, once, once Jimmy B access is late, proving is late. That's just a gotcha. straight up facts. And gotcha. the thing is, they are put on the same timeline, same financial year. So because of that, for unaudited purposes, anything can go out. But for audited purposes, need actual financials to be on point and to be finished. And they all share the same auditor. So in the next said, is there two different auditors have to be talking about results or whatever, I have to be discussing what's this, what you understand? Right. And the same auditor, same everything, except the thing is, in this case, I just got late, so I know J Akuma is going to be late. And then when I saw Jamie became out to the last Akuma's disclosure, I know Jamie was also the problem as well. Gotcha. That's that's the kind of sense of how you connect the dots and figure Very out, you know. So when I say access, proof is going to be late at the same time. All right. So again, recap for everyone again. Make sure that when whatever companies you are invested in, you know both their associates and their subsidiaries for the companies because they do and or could impact their financial reporting and other things as well too in terms of performance. I'm going to show you guys how to calculate the PE. I'm going to show you how to calculate the trailing PE. And it's just something that persons make mistake on all the time. Yeah, that's a very that's a very good one. It's a very important one. So bringing up my Word document to show the calculation. Well, what's the trailing EPS? The trailing EPS is where you're able to actually calibrate back earnings to the most concurrent 12 months it results in, in news. So what does that mean? So some persons have seen news day price with respect to the six months earnings and get a PE that's whack. And that's until you actually use it. So in the case of Massey right here, their, their EPS for the 2020 financial year was $7.11. Mm -hmm. And for those who are asking, when you're calculating the EPS for a company, you're going to use the property attributable to shareholders at the parent, not the catalytic net profit. You don't use that. I'm going to show an example after this. So 7-Eleven minus the way the, the trailing EPS works is that you remove the prior period of reporting. In this case, 241. Hold on, you, you went too fast, so just go back Sorry. to where you found it. Right. So, the 7-Eleven is Massey's 2020 earnings per share. Right. And for the six months 2020, it was 241. Right. So you subtract this. So you're trying ah. to capture the, 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 the most recent six months and remove the older six months period. So you subtract $2.41. Okay. And you add 298. And the result is uh, 7.68. Price. 298 is coming from the audited. I 298 that. is the trailing EP. 711, this is the, oh, let me just put equal here. 711 right. is the 2020 EPS. Right, saw that. This is the six months for 2020. Saw this that. is the most recent uh, period. Okay. So this was a loss, we'd add it instead and not subtract it. Okay. And then Massey's share price is 69.76. So 
So the PE is equal to 6976 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70. right. So that you get 9.08 of the as a PE, yeah. which in Jamaica would be very cheap compared to yes, whatever is having the market. Yes, it is. And let me calculate the PB now for those who want to know how to calculate this ratio. And we're getting we're getting requests to do another one. So uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. I, I'll show you guys, man. I'll show you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna use uh, Guardian to explain the reference thing I'm explaining. So book value. So for the masses equity attributable to shareholders, this figure right here, guys, now, we're not controlling interest, we don't use that. We use the profit attributable to owners of the parent. I have a question. Is that a true reflection of, 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 of what is to you based on the difference in the numbers? So the, so the, so the the amount was in this case was. six two five five, and then you have six point five here. The total equity, right, right. Okay, so for those who are asking why we have share property to shareholders, why I'm not controlling interest. So for those who are unfamiliar, know who are familiar to accounting, there's something called IA sixteen, which is mm -hmm. a accounting standard. It speaks to how you consolidate and how you represent financials for companies. And where you do not have 100% control of another company, which is not classified as an associate, we have a, so let us say you have subsidiary control. You can't say the company as a subsidiary, but you don't want to a company, you have to report the kind of actually interest, which is attributable to the other shareholders and put everything else into your equity base. Okay. So, so because of that, what ended up happening is that in this case, you have an NCI of 234 million and equity attribute share of 6.255 billion. And in this case, we're going to divide by this no I'm just going to paste it as, as it is. It's small, but yeah, let me just re resize it. Mm -hmm. So six point two five zero two divided by ninety eight three forty two three eighty two gives us sixty three point six one. That is our book value, guys. Let's just change the time to Roman again. Size eleven. So the PB. And let me just expand the size of this properly. It's equal to 69.76 divided by 63.61, which is equal to 1.10. Which means that max is trading at a its price is trading basically close to its intrinsic or book value in that sense, what's actually attributable to shareholders. So his PE is below 10 and his price to book is 1.1. So you can kind of get an idea as to how cheap stocks in Trinidad trade. Right. And I'm going to show you guys the Guardian holding PE calculation. So you can actually understand what I was speaking about earlier with respect to the whole idea surrounding calculating with a loss in the prior period. Yes, guys, I have all these links ready for you. That's G nah, nah, I'm using that right now. GLL audited, GLL Q1. So let's zoom in. So the EPS here is 3.34. Now, here's a trick, guys. Remember, in mathematics, 
if you have something that's negative and you have another negative sign, it becomes positive. So they reported a loss of per share of 16 cents. So because of that, we're going to add, add in this case instead of subtract. And the current quarter's EPS <coughs> is 0.76. which is 4.36. And then the price for Garden and the TTSC is trading at So you get a PE of 7.41 times. Mm -hmm. which, is not, which is still extremely low, by the way. Compared to the JSC, I mean, yeah, about 18 yeah. times of the financial index, yeah. that's, that's yeah. very cheap. And we calculate the book value now for you guys to see. So we're going to use the most recent quarter. So in this case, I can't copy and paste. It's 4641039. Mm -hmm. After you're done, I'm going to ask you to do something because this is in the essence of learning. I'm going to ask you to share. Well, this would be for the Jamaican. I'm going to show the Jamaican one as well. No, 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 no. It's something oh, else. Jamaican. It's so basically for the persons who might not understand, which they should, they really should understand the calculations, everyone. But um, what I have found on the Jamaica, for the Jamaican side, and David, you can correct me. If, uh, you can correct me if... If you feel, if you think that would be, because it, it's 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 free flowing and open here. Um, Mayberry has an investment sheet that they do every day, mm. and they put out. Wait. Yeah, what are you saying about the sheet? So, yes. for persons who might not know how to, uh, well, they'll understand how to calculate it, but they might need to do that every single day. There's there, no the Mayberry sheet. The Mayberry sheet does it, but I'm just showing. Calculation right, in this yeah. case for persons to understand. Right. And that's what I wanted to show them afterwards as well, too, where they can pick it up very quickly. Yeah, I just want to explain to them how it works. Mm. Come on. So the, PB, so the book value right here is just 20 on the dot. <laughs> and the price was, and the actual market price is 3231. Yeah. So it's only it says basically only let's call it it's only twelve dollars and thirty one cents over, which is not that bad still. I've seen worse. 1.62 as a PB for Guardian. All right, so the, so the market price, so what that means everyone is that the market price is 1.62 times IO, basically. Yeah. I can hear you, man, yeah, times actual uh, book value. Right. And then the e PE is very low compared to the Jamaican market. I mean, they haven't paid dividend at the moment. That's good because that's where capital is sitting in the books. Yeah. So for I mean, me personally, this is the kind of company I would love to look at. I would start looking at to, to, to look to invest in because I like companies that I'm sorry, but I like companies that have low PEs and 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 um, low price to book values as well too. Because it's 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 about the return on investment and the and the and the um and the safety for me of the company. So what everybody so what David is about to show you, show everyone if you are not aware is that every single day uh Mayberry does a trade sheet. Uh and this trade sheet basically actually does that calculation for you for each of the companies that are there. Um there and is this the need is kind of off right now about right. the, yeah. the PE and everything else is kind of up to date. Right. And there is if also you guys, if you guys are to download the trade yeah, sheet, you get way more information. Way more information. I'm going to show you in a second. Yeah. It is downloading. And it, 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 the page kind of stays, it, this detail stays right here. So you can actually scroll up and down as you need to. Right. Yeah. This is, so this is where I started everything from in terms of, in terms of my, my, where I got my information from to start my valuations. Like it started from there and then I expanded it to the, to the downloadable sheet because that had much more information there. And yeah. 
All right, it's finally, it's finally ready. Well, Yannick, now that you know, you could actually go check it. Um, in terms of this, in terms of the, in terms of the PE, you can, you can check it now. So, so jump onto Mayberry and in that investor sheet and see where it is. Let's give you some homework to do. Oh, because I'm enjoying the whole research process though still. So <laughs> the data you see right here is telling you the, the, the last bid, the last ask. It's telling what actually contributed to the change in the overall JSC index or the overall combined index. Right. Trailing 12 months EPS, the 12 months. Make this a bit bigger because it's. Oh, sure. Sorry about that. Yeah, just a little bit bigger. Right, there we go. And it shows you book value per share. This is wrong, obviously. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's only in cents, sorry. It's only in cents. Yes, it's in cents. Right, yeah. you have to calculate. So that's the yeah. thing you have to be mindful of, everyone. Um, yeah. Some of these calculations are represented in cents, so you're going to have to bring it back to the process dollar to get, the, to get, that, to get that value, the true value. In and then it tells you price to book, even in 2021, 2020, and the yield, the market capitalization isn't. So the last sale was, on, it says it actually when laptop was last traded, which is the last sale. All right. I found this to be very important. So if anybody is going to download this document, pay and attention it's to that. for free, published every day for free. Every day, but pay attention to that last sale date because there have been, been times when the document doesn't update and you can always tell when it's out because the last sale date should at least have one or some of those companies should definitely have a sale date that is on the day of the of the document being being published if it doesn't right if if it's showing that all of the companies listed in the document have the day before there was an error and it wasn't published properly yeah it's not, it's not necessarily it's it's good it's a good resource but still you need to at least you know check it for yourself or you know that's right that's right. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a resource, but it's not necessarily something you use as a, a gospel. And as That's you can see, NC is just company right here by market cap. Let me zoom in. 342 billion. And then you have surgical group right here at 205 billion. Then you have Mr. GHL at 177 billion. As you scroll down, we find where's Mr. Scotia now? I scroll too far. So it's right there, there it is at, at number 10. Oh. No, oh, sorry, that's Scotia's at 124 billion. All right. So that's it, guys. When Massey comes in, Massey's going to pass out Scotia and go just below Garden Innocence. All right. Somebody asked about this trade sheet because they're, they're, they're knowledgeable about it. If you could explain the 12 month projected PE. So I would, have, probably, I would say. That's, that's, that's probably Mayberry's internal research. Okay. And let me answer these questions right here about the oh you yes the statement you made the quantity of stock bought and the time it was being bought for so so that picture I show you guys this is JMMB's uh upgraded platform where you can actually see the last trades for the stock you can see the queue and I'm not being uploaded for JMB but it's a very good feature I just have using JTrader Pro at this point so it shows you you know, when trade was executed, the volume, the price, the change, how it affected the stock price by a particular period. And you also made money JA as well. That's a website where you can, you know, be a data collated yeah. and organize this stuff. But this is very for me in the daytime when I'm actually looking at stocks. I kind of see when the trade executed. And the thing is, I can correlate this data to an extent because I'm going to show you something I found two weeks ago. Yeah. So this was a day when you had this massive sell-off in the market, quote unquote sell-off. As you can see, the carib cement, there was a sale at eleven thirty-five for three point four billion shares. Three point four million shares. I mean, sorry. And when I checked, right here, it could have been anybody in the top ten. But it wasn't. No. It, was, yeah, it, actually, it actually was, it was, because it's the only person that has an amount of shares that can actually be traded. Right. The first suspect was select funds, but when I checked their holdings after, it wasn't them. And the Mexicans ain't selling, so my next question, 
my quick question was, which of these funds were selling the shares? Mm -hmm. And for this particular idea, a good number of stocks had massive sell downs. Reason being, somebody was exiting the, their position. So it was Carib Cement, Scotia Group, it was Sajikura Jamaica, NCBFG, Jamaica Brothers Group, Grace Kennedy, and it just dragged the market down part by like 11,000 points. And uh, this was Mail Pack, somebody saw that as well. Carreras, Nando 2, Select mm -hmm. Funds. And here's the thing about it. This intrigued me, and this is kind of what revealed to me who was the actual fund or entity that was selling the shares that particular day. So let's look back, guys. 11,936,000. When we check the top 10 holdings, though, it's top 10 persons. So we kind of see where the top 10 kind of levels out. And remember, we saw support with Carib Cement a while ago, and only a top 10 shareholder could have actually had that kind of volume. Right. And when we check right here, the two shares actually were in the same area. Sajikura Equity Fund, Sajikura Pool Equity Fund. So that's why I love that J the JMB data sheet, basically. Because I said, 3 million plus shares, we only available by the top 10 shareholders. And maybe we're selling so easily. Mexicans not selling. So, and who else is in the top ten that has kind of volume? Hydrogen pool equity, okay. and that's just one of the funds that I found. And I saw, and that's the guys. You guys can kind of figure out what's going on in the market. Because if you see this kind of volume trade, then you can see the top ten and see all this correlation between holdings and who's in the top ten in this case. You can figure out who did those sales. Ah. It was either a surgical core pool equity fund or a surgical core unit trust, or in this case, equity fund, but basically that's what happened. So that's why the market fell on this particular day because the pension fund or the unit trust was actually rebalancing for some potential event. I'm not sure what it was, but... But the select funds gave it away though still. That's what gave it away. Mm -hmm. And the market fell by 11,000 points within less than a couple of minutes just because of that, that those massive trades. Karma guys, the same volume weight to the principal again. And based on the market is set up, that the market is skewed to a select set of companies, your NCB, your Skadjiko and Scotia, make up more than 40% before JJ came to the market in terms of the overall mark, market cap at the JSC. And in this case, yeah, the Scotia Group dive into 39.50 from a high of 42 for the day. Yeah, it's actually going from $52 peak to 47.50. NCB, the same thing, 139 to 137.50. And that's and that's so you can kind of see what happens in the market and get the ebbs and the flow of what's happening, you know? Right. Oh, and for the person asking for subsidiary affiliate, all right. I'm gonna try and make it very simple, but uh to make it simplified, I so I associate and I'm okay. Let me start, let me just go through the entire process basically. So when it comes down to how you report things in your financial statements, if you have uh, investment security, an investment security can be stocks basically. So you're like a JMB, let's start with JMB, like probably a Wisinko, a Purity, a NCD, or so below twenty percent. And you do have any like potential board controller to an extent, that's your animation security. That's measured just as the market price of the actual stock, the identical market price. So the market price goes up or down, that is where you kind of find the impact to the financials, basically. And then what happens next is in the case of uh, associate companies. So all the other typically is me measured at 20 to 50 percent, basically. If you own a non-listed company, though, you're in a particular stake, you can have to purchase an associate company. So let me show you RGR and their holdings in sci-fi holdings, which trades as Keys and Gustazos. And the thing is, say what now? Um, okay, so I'm gonna continue. If you own more than 50% of a company, 
or you have yeah, board control and a particular interest in the company, you would be deemed to have material influence to the company's financials. So although Jamti only owns 40% of uh, uh, PWI, because of how the company uh, is controlled, because the, the Jamaica Tea Board of Directors basically control the board operations of the company, or a kind of significant influence, and they had a particular shareholder there with capital subsidiary, or the typically be classified as an associate. And then you had Tajikor real estate expo with Playa, where because of how they had the board control and their potential stake in the company, which was 15% at the time, they were classified as an associate company. So that's why Tajikor financial got impacted so much last year because of how it was reported. So as I said, in this case, associates in this case, 6.89% because in the listed company it was listed to be a regular investment security. And 25% right here, typical associate. Right. And let me give you a perfect example of this in the form of MJE. MJE is Mayberry Jamaican Equities. And I'm sorry we're taking so long, guys. It's been like almost two hours, but I'm pretty sure you've learned a lot. Definitely have. So, tip all if you want to know how Mayberry is being affected by the market or your potential holdings, let us go back to Mayberry Jamaican Equities 2020 audited. And this is why I said if you want to know Mayberry is going to come out or even a kidable is going to come out, look at the publicly available largest holdings in the company. So, so the 2020, their supplementary stake represented 52% of their entire investment holdings. And now, it represents just 47% because of the decline in the stock price. They haven't sold any shares, but the price itself is still below compared to last year relative to the overall assets they had on their books. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that I'm going to do everything with you guys. Supreme interest stock price has been an uptrend for this quarter. Because when you go to the financials, you see right here unrealized gain, slash loss, and investment revaluation. And this is a mistake. It should be, the, the bracket should be the loss right here, but ah, c'est la vie, c'est la vie. So as I can see, they had a 1.9 million US dollar gain in this quarter, and it's supported as a change in the, the books, basically. So mm -hmm. if supreme interest price has a deleterious drop, it affects MJE's financials materially, because they basically, basically make up almost half of their financials. Okay. More than at it, end, yeah. At the end of March, the share price for SBL was $14.89. Right? And now it's trading as high as $20.03, as high as $21 last week. Why does this matter? Time to show you. So this is the difference between that. And the key thing, the closing price on the means are used to measure the actual per se change. It's actually the best bid price. It's an accounting standard, but I'm going to use the change in price here just to make it easier for everybody here to understand. 20.03 minus 14.89, which is $5.14. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Shareholding report. Let's uh, zoom in. So let's uh, see. 401, sorry, times 401, 995, 378. So like that, they already have a $2.1 billion gain coming on your books for Q for Q2. So what you did was, so just for everybody, they, they want to see that what you did was so multiply, the, the you multiplied the price, current price. Right. The, 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 from March 3rd, so it was in the financial quarter, minus the current price, I got 5.03. I think I got, that was, sorry, I don't remember the exact figure, but yeah, I got something like 5.03. And I'm wondering by the overall shareholders MJE has to kind of get the overall, in this case, uh, value that's going to come out 
Right. Let me just go back so you can see JMD. How does that get listed though? That get list that gets listed and unrealized. It's yes, it's unrealized gain such yeah, loss. Yeah, because it's not right, right, right. It, it probably might show up on the OCI, but it's going to minish more like it show up in the, in the P and L and the P and L. Yeah, the P and L basically. Oh, when it's OCI gets, it's like about other comprehensive income. So as you can see right here, in the JMD financials, it's already the unrealized loss last year was one point one billion dollars. Because of the market collapse in the price, right? And that was that driven by Supreme Ventures. And you've seen a two hundred eight to one million dollar unrealized gain from Supreme Ventures and oh. the other holdings. But Supreme Ventures itself has a sort of large material effect on the overall unrealized gain slash loss. So let me show you what happened last year. So last year, SVL started twenty twenty at twenty five fifty basically. Yeah. Minus in the 2020, the price declined to $17.61. So that's $7.89. And if you multiply that by the number of shares, we get $3.2 billion. So that basically more likely implies that some of it is more than likely captured in the other comprehensive income. All right, see it here. The $4.1 billion change in valuation in the OCI. So SPL probably might not come up. Give me a second, Chike. I have to let someone in. I'm coming. I'm coming. And so basically, we'll just we recap what, what David just said. So what, what he was just showing us basically is how the unrealized gains or losses and the, and the example that he was using is Supreme Ventures. Um, and basically, their, how, how it, it impacted Sorry about the change month to month or year to year, basically. Right. And so the thing is, maybe it doesn't explain which uh, holdings are specific to OCI and which ones are to investment revival such game. And but, they don't have to. They don't yeah, have to either. Yeah, but the thing is that it's more, if it's to OCI, it's good for them. But it's PNL from the other holdings, they're fine anyway still. But that's how you figure out the potential impact or increase or decrease for these companies. Even QWI, it's the same principle. All right. And I think about the guys at different companies, and in this case, I said to select funds for the same way, changing the valuation of the holdings for them. So, as we can see here, Grace Kennedy's stock price has relatively been stagnant for the quarter so far. So, not much gain from their mail pack has gone up slightly, GMT has gone up significantly. Jenna not moving so much, Jamie being moving so much, carb cement massively. As we saw earlier, from 66 to 89 right now, this is going to be valued at much more, another $20 million more. NTP financial business moving much. And then, which is why I like to tell you guys always check the reports. Because that's, QDR is only going to show you their top 10 holdings for their JMD portfolio. When we skip down to the end, look who we found. Kid Blind Investments Limited. And well, we can we can do some math. Yeah, but how did you how would you have known to go to, to link up Lombo with that since you're only getting the top ten out of the QWI, the QWI report? So that's what some that's what somebody would ask. All right, here's the trick. Remember, if you have a top ten stick in a company. It's going to get reported to the public anyway you spin it. Right. Right? So the thing is, they can, they can actually hide it. You understand? So the thing is, if you go to the top list of companies, you can just build up a spreadsheet for yourself if you want to actually track even better. Ah. Yeah. I'm going to share a spreadsheet in a second, but 231 was end of March, right? It's at 327 now. 231.96, and then multiply this by. 9986, 245, 9.6, call it in unrealized gains. 
for the quarter. And the quarter isn't over as yet. So let me actually show you a spreadsheet I actually sent to my email a second ago, which is an old spreadsheet, it needs to be updated. Where did I put it? Let me see if it was sent on my laptop. Oh, I never to find it now. Old spreadsheet, but still has utility in what I was explaining a while ago to you, Chike. So, not sure I can't zoom any further, but yeah. In this case, I was tracking all of MJE's publicly known stakes. And even some of them I calculated myself. So in this case, I calculated their JBG and JMB potential stake in terms of holdings of shares. And this is from, and this is again for everybody else, this is from looking looking through the other companies and seeing who were their top 10 shareholders and then recognizing that MJE was, was one of them. And this was back at the end of 2020, 2019. So... In this case, the Fontana stake is basically gone. Their amount has been reduced as well. And I mean, some other changes as well, but this is how I kind of, you know, tracked M with a tracker for MJE in a sense. Okay. All right. All right. So, again, for everyone, remember that for the companies you're investing in, Check, make sure you know who their subsidiaries and their are and their associates. That's basically the main well, thing. Well, in this case, securities for MJE and QWI. Because MJE used to own associates taking some of these companies, but they sold their stake below the 20% mark that they reclassified as investment securities. You heard that saying though. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's the thing about it. In this case, I can actually show you in a second, but yeah, as someone says that, oh, sorry for speaking so fast. Mentally, when I'm just on my game, it's is, very yeah. hard to slow down. Don't worry about it. Um, well, Sidetrap, this, this is a question from Kemel having, he's asking, would you say how cheaply stocks in TNT trade? Is it, um, is it that they trade closer to their intrinsic value? And if not, what what factors contribute to the way stocks in uh, in TNG trade versus in Jamaica? So, you know, Ravi Tawari, who is the CEO of Garden Holdings, made me know something, and I was shocked. So apparently, in Trinidad, what happens is that there were some changes to the pension fund regulations, which mm -hmm. basically resulted in them not being as active in the stock exchange anymore. So because of that, what ended up happening was that they ended up having to wake that again. Yeah, they had to be so called the pension funds had to step back from the market. Trinidadian market isn't as vibrant as ours in Jamaica now, thanks to the government and everything else. Right. So, so as companies value been continuing to increase, there has been a similar push by investors to this buy up shares in the market. So of course it pushed it back. No, it pushed the price. Back. No, it's price lower. Back. So the prices have been going up, but they've been going very slow. So okay. because of that, you have a share price going much slower compared to your overall expanding book and overall financials. So I'm going to share what I was talking about for the de-recognition of associate companies, for MJE. So MJE used to hold these companies and I classified for them as associates. So when I go to Mayberry, 20, Mayberry Investments 2017 audited, I said, you guys, you can type it into Google and you will see it come up same time. Immediately, yep. And I said, guys, audited notes are your best friend. They give you a proper comprehensive guide as to what to see and what to understand. So as I said, the whole this takes to MJE, and because Mayberry has, has control of MJE based on the shows and whatever, they end up consolidating the financials. So whatever MJE reports, they slap it on to Mayberry Business Limited consolidated income statement. And on top of that, they eliminate intercompany intercompany trades. 
So I may be responsible for income statement. Mm -hmm. They would record that the commissions and so on from MGE sales or whatever, but or the even the management fee, but under the consolidated financials, they wouldn't see it. So no 21. All right. As I said, $24 billion balance sheet. And then when we go to the statement of company, you end up seeing a very smooth, a much smaller net profit line. Cash is the company sand loan statements. And then 16 billion in assets. For the company of itself, from the yeah. of, from it's, very yeah, so that I, I use that to kind of guide me in some things. I'm gonna show you guys how I even found how such a core pays us as shareholders in dividends. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are we that's it, guys. It's very fun to understand all of these things. So, so 21. in this case, it's representing their investment in associates, they record the share results, so at a particular period, and they do recognize their associates. But in this case, last financial services. Uh, period in this case would have been December. So maybe I put all these at December 31, but their financial year is March, is, uh, March 31, April 31, June 30, and this is December 31, which would be Iron Rock. So it's it concordant with Mayberry's financials. So the way a share of profit works is that as well the percentages, you multiply that by the net profits or loss. <laughs> and you account for it on the income statement. Right. I'm going to show it to JMB shortly, but yeah, so Mayberry sold their holdings just around 19% for most of these companies right here. So they are classified as investment securities rather than associate companies, because these companies are all listed. And in this case, because they're below 20%, they no longer had to reclassify them as associate companies. So let me show you. And this is where I tell you guys, if you follow me on Twitter, guys, JC92, it's me to some things at times, and it's very clear and transparent. All right, JMB. Just got to connect those dots. So, Make right here. Yeah. Yeah. So, the way share associate works for JMB, or just get share of loss at the time, is that JMB owns 22.52 at the time percent in Tajiko Financial Company. But what you guys should understand is how to calculate the share of profit. Okay, you can at least understand how the financial or the income profit and loss statement will look ahead of time. All right. So I did a tweet. Uh, that's taking a second to load. And let me just go to my link tree to just find the details I had on maybe share profit for the fourth for the for Tadico Financial Company's fourth quarter. This is where I keep all my notes, but my art published articles, by the way, guys. And we will also put that link in there later on. Not that. <laughs> uh. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what I was looking for. Let me zoom in. So I calculated to Jim Sajikor Financial Company's share profit to JMB. So JMB at the time did not. Keyword did not account for the share profit of such a financial company at the time because at the time they're in there through their audit, and this is an audited financial for JMB, so they didn't need to necessarily report it here in this case. So, and in turn, proven business limited, but the quarter did not report to uh, uh, such a financial company share of associates yeah, as, well. as well, right? It was actually disclosed in the notes, by the way, so. But on the, so on the, but how did you get the shares? So the how did you get the share? That such a financial company was not included. So for such a financial company's fourth quarter, which should be JMB's third quarter, their profit rose by 152% to 29 million US dollars. 
and that was with respect to the fourth quarter. And that's for profit attributable to shareholders, not the consolidated net profit. Key keyword, not the consolidated net profit. And I'm gonna show you how to calculate the So this is Sajikor Financial Company's reporting segment, uh, press release. And the thing about these companies that are international, they have earnings calls, they records with analysts, they have presentations, right. they defend more detail. That's some even to have figure, have someone to be able to figure out GMB share of profit, same for proven, and several other things. So you can see right here, it tells you that for the fourth quarter, they had a $29 million profit for the fourth quarter. And this is for net income and share by to shareholders. Why does this matter? Let us go to the financial statements for you guys to get a little glimpse. So this is the audited financials. So as you can see right here, although the consolidated net loss was minus 15 million US, mainly because right. of player, Right. The loss attributable to shareholders was only 2.4 cents, or in this case, 3.6 million for the overall financial year. So you see the NCI being so large right here? Yeah, JMB only calculates their share profit from this figure right here. So, so, what, so what advantage is that to, to JMB? Well, so share profit you're basically reporting whatever ownership you have in a company times in it for the quarter mm -hmm. onto your income statement which is why you see share of loss of associate right here right and i'm going to show you something with proven again i don't know why i closed that before so proven owns 20.01 percent of jmb group limited so what our JMB group reports as their profit, proven reports 20.01% of that as well. With the usual FX movement affecting the how supported, but yeah. So in this case, they reported a share of, of, of profit at $5.7 billion. Sorry, $5.5 billion for the overall nine months. Right. And that's mainly from JMB. And if you go to the notes, Uh, where is Jamie and B now? Mm -hmm. Ah, so they tell you that Jamie and B contributed 5.34 million in the form of share of profit for the nine months. And we can calculate that. So let's go back to Jamie and B. So the profit attributed to the shareholders for the nine months was 3848. 868 000. I'm gonna just type in the FX rate at a time. So for those who don't know, you can type in Jamaica Observer and the date and forex, and you'll think you'll see the FX rate. So it was 140.658 at that particular day. Oh, I just learned something new there as well, too. So everybody make note of that one as well. Yeah. So for the nine months, yeah, it comes out with, uh, let me see something. Am I missing a zero? Yeah, I'm missing a figure. <laughs> Silly me, three, eight, four, eight, eight, six, eight. Ah, so I was getting 26 something million, which isn't the case. Sorry, I made a mistake. As far as I supposed to multiply by 20.01%. So for those, oh, I'm going to show it on, on the spreadsheet so you can, the Word document so you guys can see it. All right. So let's increase the size of this. So share of profit equal ownership times profit 
ATT to shareholders. JMB Group Limited, nine months profit attributable to shareholders equal uh, three eight. And that's again, this is going to be an exact science all the time because there'll be some deviations, but at least we'll make you know what you're supposed to expect. You just get a, yeah, you, you get an esti a good estimated figure. Divided by, oh sorry, times 0 0.2001. Oh, this, sorry. Share of profit equal 3848. It's 68. 20.01 is what Jamie uh, proven owns. This right. equates to 26. Give me a second. Uh, for eight, it's 68. Zero, zero, seven, seven, point two, zero, zero, one. Sorry, it's a, I made a mistake right there. 770, 158. 486.8. Convert this at the FX rate. Which was 140. That's I'm using the BOJ's indicative rate. Not sure rate proven used. Well, 4658. Yes. So that's the rate I am using. Let me just, oh. Divided by 146.58 equals 5.2 five, five, five five million, basically, is it? Yeah. Yeah, 5.3 million. Round it up. Yeah, and the thing is, proven reported 5.34 million in from a share profit. So it won't be exact because I don't know what FX rate proven used to convert it, but that's how share profit works. So Jimmy B reported 3.848 for the nine months in share of, I should say, shareholders. Right. And proven reported 5.34. As I said, I mean, FX rate is probably too high, but. I was able to figure out what Jimmy's profit was. Close so now when we request the results early, I'm able to figure out what Jimmy's profit for the quarter is before it's in published to the JSC. Nice. And this isn't anything illegal or whatever. This is just uh, using math to prepare ahead of time. I'm going to show you guys how Jimmy and me got a share of loss for their first quarter. We should have been such a financial company's second quarter. Jimmy and B reports in this case, a share of loss of $8.9 million. In this case, oops. We go on to share of net profit attributed to the share. So continuing, so I said net profit attributed to the shareholders, 281,000 times 150. That's me being conservative, times 0.225. Yeah, so I'm going to share it on the spreadsheet right now. SFC loss for Q2 equals US 281,000. Share of loss equals 0.225. So it's 22.5%, but for those who don't know, you can actually convert something to decimal place right. instead of you divide by 100 or whatever. Right. So 281,000, which is equal to. Sixty three two twenty five. It is USD, so sixty three two twenty five times one fifty. I said I'm using a rate just right now. After my head, guys, and it's not exact science. <laughs> so you get nine 
four eight three seven fifty. And as I said, I'm using a rate that's overestimating, so. Right. So you're gonna put eight, nine, four, six. Let me actually check the FX rate on that particular day. Let's just see if I can be a little more precise. One forty point zero one. See? Let's try and use one forty point zero one then. Eight point um basically eight point nine in a sense. As I said, I'm not getting I'm gonna get the exact figure because but you're gonna get close to it. You're exactly. gonna get very close to it. So that's what calculate the share for Jamie me in the first quarter. Okay. So why do all this matter, guys? Let's go back. So JMB did not report their subject word share of profit for the fourth quarter. Or in this case, JMB's third quarter. No, the results are out. And I calculated JMB's share of profit to be $946.1 million. So SSU is reporting a loss for the for the up to the period up to the end of September. And then the fourth quarter was a, a profit. First quarter was a profit as well. But in this case, if JMB was to have included this $941 million in their <gasps> nine months, let's see what it will come out to. 423, 494 plus 941. 946. 6.1. That'll be way more. $5 million. Right. Punish everybody. Nine hundred and forty six. All right. Eight four nine five plus nine forty six point nine forty six. There we go. That's right. So what does this tell me? That this, these financials are understated. And look at the thing about it, guys. JMB's overall profitability to shareholders went down slightly. And the consolidated profit was higher than the over prior nine months without COVID. Huh. Right? And let us go to JMB's. That's even JMB. I did the calculation on Twitter for you guys. So JMB should have a share of profit of $1.05 billion for their fourth quarter. Mm. But it was understated based on, well. Exactly. Based let, on us, based. let me show you something. Jamie Geo 2020 audited. As I said, we can calculate, can, we can estimate what JMB's operating profit could have been for the quarter, right? And then we can just add on SFC's current contribution and get a, and get a value. And also you can kind of, in a sense, remember your usual P, uh, valuation methods like PE, it's called the cash flow and dividend discount model and so on. You can still, you know, figure things out. So we're going to have to do, we're going to have to do a completely different one on that one. Yeah, yeah, but I just tell you guys, and I know the calculation, I'm trying to share something. So in this case, JMB's operating profit was 5642145 for the, for the financial year. Minus 5142466. And this was influenced largely because of the impairment provision that they had to record. Mm -hmm. So, JMB had a $500 million in operating profit for that fourth quarter, right? Let's just use the 2019 figure and see something. To see what it sh probably should be, though, still. Under normal circumstances. Minus. Oh, the fourth quarter for them at the same time was also a decline. So, the, the last two fourth quarters for JMB have been terrible. There's operating profit. Hmm, well, let's just estimate and say they make 
So six hundred million dollars in operating profit, right? Five one four two. Plus 66 plus 500 million. Sorry, 700 million. This is me conservative basically. 5842 plus 66. So that's up profit by estimate. And let's just add the two things I mentioned a while ago. So, Shepherd for the fourth quarter. And the thing is, let me explain to you guys what. If you haven't realized, JMB's share profit is higher now because of a good thing called a share buyback. So, the Strategic Financial Company has been buying back their shares quite aggressively over the last nine months. Once, that's true. Yes. So, because of that, wrong business notes. <laughs> because of that, what they have happening basically is that JMB is now reporting a much larger overall share profit. They, have a, they didn't buy more shares, but because the number of shares has declined, they're actually able to report more, basically. So, one put, so let us just add the, put the share of profit for Q3 is 946.1 million. And then for the fourth quarter, 1.05 billion. I reckon this estimate to an extent, they won't have large impairment loss on financial assets like last time, but at the same time, we can just ignore somebody, we can just ignore the gain and acquisition because I won't repeat again. You can just subtract. So I should subtract to expect OP. This estimate of three hundred million dollars for context. Let us see what Jimmy did for the nine months. Oh, impairment loss is still sizable, but shrinking. And for the quarter, it was oh, it was three sixty nine million. So four hundred million dollars is actually more appropriate. Right. <laughs> so Hector was asking, you know, um, he was asking, how does this this all help him to to, to make gains? <laughs> So I was I'm saying, gonna, I'm going to show that. I'm going to show that. So let's just add these two figures in. And as I say we're just ignoring tax right now. That's the least thing. That's the least you can think about right now. All right. 946.1. All right, give me a second. So this is the oh, it's about seven four thirty eight five sixty six zero zero zero. So that's so that a total should... share profit attributed. No, 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 no. That's just that's just my estimate of profit before taxation. Oh, okay. And tax can be higher or lower, but. For the nine months you've seen it's actually been high it's relatively high still. The fourth quarter got a good tax treatment, which is why it drops so much. But in terms of gains, you can at least say that vis a vis JMB is uh, financially in with the gain acquisition from Sajikor last year should still be decent for the overall financial year. Right. And you so if and remember the drop player, the sole player now. So that player loss will no longer be driving on SFC. Yeah. Right. So, so bringing it back to every, so bringing everything back now. All right. So JMB's PB is basically price to book is around one. P is around is below ten, and player is basically gone. So JMB's profits are going to continue rising along with their overall natural performance, and it's going to be even, and it's going to continue to increase. Right. At the same time, the market has been very negative because they are also selling pressure, but it at least gets you know that hey, companies are growing. I can project, in a sense, based on such a financial company's results, even if it's not the JMB's results, what it should be, and know if the market gets surprised and starts to buy up the stock, I'd already be in from early. So that's market price. 
Yeah, but it's it's, it's, it's much work to do though still because in this case, the results are over such a core, but Jamie's audited is late. So if when the results do come out, I can actually just compare my guesstimates in a sense to what they provided. And at least I know my model in a sense works perfect and uh, to an extent how it works. And the overall thing that we're trying to get here is that we either we're trying to get in at a at a reasonable price for capital appreciate for a capital a capital appreciation in terms of the market price rising. Sorry for talking a little fast, guys, but uh, I'm slowing down now. But all of this is just you know showing how much market research you have to put in if you want to make money at times. Because so when persons were surprised by proven results or even JMB with the share profits and everything, it wasn't a surprise to me because I already factored it in. Right. And then these simple accounting, understanding of accounting allows me to prepare, understand what comes up or, you know, who contributed what to the financials. So let me even show you, let me see my last example as Derrimon, and I'll take a few more questions before I close off because I'm pretty sure people are like, oh my God, this was so much information. <laughs> Yeah, persons persons have said that they definitely have to rewatch it a couple of times for sure. <laughs> and I do want and I do want to get the last I do want to get the so I'll take the, the last question from Orville after you're done for sure. All right. So what I was explaining to you guys was in this case Derman presents both their company statement and their consolidated financials. So this is showing the Derman company in its own isolated core. And they're doing pretty good. Cause this was a course where they had COVID and everybody buying up food like crazy. Mm, okay. The company, the core company, so net profit went up by 82%. The core company that speaks well. And then when I go over here to the over consolidated financials. I see one hundred and fifty-four point one seven two million. So, for those who don't know, Dermon acquired a company called by the name of Caribbean Flavors. Well, I'm going to see if I was going to talk about the New York businesses. Oh, okay. And what I'm showing you guys is, if something's happening in a company, because another company, or you know, share profit and these things, if the market is late in a sense and is shocked by results. You won't be shocked. You'd already expected it. Right. Right. So they consolidate CFF's financials and it won 62.02% of CFF. Which would have meant that anything that happens to CFF is going to yeah. impact them. So they'd have reported about 10.5 million in net prof in profit for them. And then NCI Last year around this time, this would have all been CFF. It should have all been CFF. So the way it works, guys, is that in this case, their money reports six to sixty-two percent in their probably be the shareholders of the company. And in the case of the companies acquired in New York, they own it through another holding company called Manorock Limited. 80%, so the 20% that they don't control to come on the NCI. So if the core business itself did that great, and then you had CFF with a very lukewarm permit for the quarter, that's telling you that Dermon did some damp, is going to have some very good quarters going forward thanks to his acquisition. Because they have only reported for part of the quarter. Because they were that quite like mid February. Right, and they haven't had a yeah, they haven't had the full full run ah, of the year. Cheek is catching on. Yep, 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 so, yep. So when I did the calculations within the consolidated net profit, this figure right here, and the Derriman company own, it comes up to about sixty three three twenty six million in the New York subsidiary contributing to the net profit. Nice. And you said I've also considered their other businesses, including including Woodcats and uh, yes, Woodcats and Select Grocers. And the good thing is, because those companies report such smaller numbers 
as I said, guys, she'd add different for companies, and you can do your estimations as to what each of product does contribute. But if New York Business only did this in call it less than a month of, if you want to call it proper consolidation, what's going to happen next quarter? Okay, they're technically reporting almost half of their 2020 results in just one quarter. You already, have an you already have a you have a, a, a fairly good estimation that you can make if things stay on the same projected path what it would what it would be for yes. a full year and that is so when people were so last week from time they released their results the market was running to back the stock that's like six dollar fifty and for me i was just laughing because i got to exit my position because from time from their overall six months was of course in a higher net profit compared to the overall 2020 financial year and the third quarter had been the most impacted period for Fantana because that's when they have taken the hits to their overall income statement because of the revaluation of their financial assets. Interesting. So, as I said, the last question was, and it actually follows on what you just said um, from Arville. Arville was stating, was asking, what are the implications or, or consequences, if any, of understating or reporting of your financials? There are, so no, there are no real major consequences for unaudited financials. I'm just being honest, there are no real consequences. If you read JSC's rule book and whatever you've seen, there aren't really real consequences. But at the same time, you as a person investing should understand what's being reported and if it if it matters. They maybe wasn't necessarily under reporting because they wanted to, but they couldn't hold up their unaudited financials for SFC, which reported in like near the end of, in a March, and they had to report right in February. So I'm saying they have had a ten million dollar hit right here from the from the declared unrealized loss of their unit trust, and as I said, the increases from the from the barbican location contributed to this spike right here. Mm -hmm. And as I seen from the six months, two ninety three, two seventy six. And then when Tana released his results, I think it was a Thursday. We can see the spike. Ah, so six so there Thursday, six oh seven, six thirty four. So the candlesticks, six fifty. And that was under and that was on the back of the results that was that was given. And the thing is, that wasn't a surprise to me because six months they've already been in their 2020 financial year. Right. So prices are jumping over 300% increase in profits. Oh my God, I need to buy the stock. And I've already been in my position in play already. That's how you kind of profit from these simple things. In them, it looks simple, but the company from beats its financials for the 2020 or prior financial year very early. Put a note on it. The market right. might take a while to react to it, but got it in with carp cement. They already beat beating up beating their 2019 results in this nine months. And then within for the first quarter, they basically reported almost half of their 2020 net profit in one quarter. And then the market reacts accordingly. So you know, research itself might seem pointless. Yeah, I'm like, why am I listening to David? But it kind of you kind of realize that. To make your plays and positions, if you understand, you know, accounting treatment for different companies, and as I said, you can compare entity to Fontana, different financial companies report differently, and so on. But these are the kind of things that will kind of help you as to predict even profit. Because QWI is novice public, you can compare the NAV now, then now at the end of the reporting period, and estimate to an extent what their profit should be for the upcoming quarter. Right. And then, even in the case of Fontana, right here, they beat all the financial year from the six months. A market reacted this hesitantly already to the quote unquote jump in profits. So if Fontana reports something like four hundred and fifty medals, for example, against two seventy six in August twenty twenty nine, when the results should be out, it probably might say even bigger spike, which is when most people react to financials for the full audited year as well. So the key takeaway, the key takeaway is understanding. The connections that are seen in the financials additionally also paying keen attention to the audited financials that shows us the 
big picture, the whole and it, stuff. The, the, the notes explain the, how the procedures for everything. They tell you how they consolidate the financials, how they recognize revenue, uh, what's, what's particular assets make up even other income or land items. And oh yeah, Philip, Grace can is done the TTSC if you didn't know. I'll actually show you right now. <laughs> and there's no implications to be honest. It's actually trades higher than Jamaica. Easily. Because of the bet because of the better the better valuation for the, Not for the, the better dollar. valuation, Chica, remember. People need money, USD, so they just get they just sell the shares in Jamaica. Cross listing, right? Yes. And, and I said, that's why I have seen the price trading high over there because people just want to get the money out. So 525 TTD in JNB, 115.56. And if we look at it is our, 87. Chris, on Jamaica side, it is. And she mentioned that $116 in a sense. Which is what persons are saying GK should be treating that in relation to fair value, but I think can explain the question that uh, he had about GK being listed under the exchange. There's the real implication per se. It no, really it, it really helps persons access money because Trinidad is in a very difficult situation right now. There's a lockdown, curfew, city emergency. So for you to access the US dollars, it's probably import something that you want for school or something else you have a back door buy the shares in trinidad carry to jamaica and sell it it might become at a loss but you get your access to us dollars yeah. well this was this was massively informative um every, everybody has definitely said i mean i learned a lot but i really wasn't I wasn't even getting this this granular as yet, so <laughs> this is that's that's for sure. I got major work to do, but this is this is why you are who you are and why you do what you do, um, for sure. So, but as of course, everyone, any questions that we might we might have missed, please put them in the chat, and definitely we will answer Apart them two? after. Yeah, we don't have time. Hopefully there's no have... question about it. There's no question about it. We're gonna we're gonna have to have we're gonna have to have a part two based on based on um based on this <laughs> to, go, to, to go more to go more in depth into how yeah, i even it, it, like it, it, financials it, it, or how i project events or <laughs> yeah i think i think actually will be beneficial indeed is 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 how we yeah we, we're gonna have to talk to david as david's assistant for real um uh, you know we'll do that but yeah i think in in terms of in terms of really linking those doing the linkages between the companies of itself I'm ex especially intrigued in in how you put together, finding out where the profit is coming in, where it's missing, etc. That's big because that tells you, as you rightfully said, you're not surprised when things happen, and that's that's what really needs to, what everybody really needs to learn, right? That's one of the big things. We need not be surprised when we see a company performing because we know, you know, that it's 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 already it's already there. We would have already seen it based on a, a thorough, a thorough um, review of the of the company's financials. But yeah, my, I wanna, I wanna definitely thank you for the time. Um, that, that <laughs> three hours, yeah. almost three hours, almost three hours. So. Yeah, yeah we're almost, we're almost definitely yeah, that. So, so guys, um, of course, if you, as as we said, if you're here still, please like, share, and subscribe, so that we can get this information out to more people, so that they can become more invested, interested, and understanding of what is going on with the companies that they invest in. So uh, we've got some more exciting meetings coming up for sure. And you will be informed, uh, Ricardo. I'm sure you'll be looking forward to a couple of those. And, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be back to host those definitely in, in the coming weeks. So stay tuned, stay tuned to our, our Twitter, stay tuned to our IG and, and the other media and platforms that, that we're there. So for the other meetings coming up and again, David, thank you so much. Most definitely. All right.